It's unbelievable. You just can't believe that it's happening. It feels great. I've been here like four years. Doing pretty, you know, mediocre now. We're winning. Fantastic. Crowd response is great. It's just really fun to be here. That was the same Thursday night on campus at Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jacket fans with reason to cheer. Undefeated and untied after three games. And they're here at Grant Field in Atlanta to host the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Both teams going after their first conference win. Atlanta, Georgia, a city of two million, where the biggest story is college football. Vince Evans leads invading North Carolina State. The senior running back waited more than three years for his chance to be a starter. And last week responded with 201 yards on the ground. He's come from nowhere to be the number four rusher and the number 10 pass receiver in the ACC. Georgia Tech counters with Robert Lovett, the second leading ground gainer in the conference, averaging better than 118 yards a game. The 195-pound senior is on his way to becoming Tech's all-time leader in rushing, receiving, and scoring. He's the explosive in Tech's offensive arsenal. The man who sets the charge is junior quarterback John Dewberry. He leads an offensive attack that has run up 92 points in three games and open with three straight wins. Dewberry ranks first in the league in passing efficiency and fourth in total offense. It's ACC football, North Carolina State against Georgia Tech. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions presents exclusive live coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. Today, from Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia, it's the Wolfpack of NC State against the Ramblin' Wreck from Georgia Tech. Brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Corporation, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. By Natural Light Beer, the beer with a taste for food. By Food Lion, America's fastest growing supermarket chain. And by NCNB, the people who work to be the best bank in the neighborhood. A nearly perfect day for football. Temperatures in the low 70s with a light breeze at Grant Field in Atlanta. The Wolfpack of North Carolina State will take the field with an overall record of 2-2. Two and two. They're 0-1 in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And for head coach Tom Reed and his football team, a pivotal game of the 1984 season. It's quite a different story for Georgia Tech. The Ramblin' Wreck is back. A 3-0 start, reminiscent of the great clubs of Bobby Dodd. And Bill Curry has resurrected the program in the tradition of the man he played for here at Grant Field. I'm Mike Patrick, and it's great to have you with us along our ACC Football Network again this afternoon. As usual, it's my pleasure to be working with Kevin Kiley. And Kevin, Georgia Tech comes in here with some great offensive statistics. Number one in the ACC, they're eighth in the country. Special treat for us today to see the Georgia Tech offense, the great offensive line, Robert Levette, genuine Heisman candidate. Not a big back, not a physical back, but a guy that can really hurt you offensively. John Dewberry comes in this year, a new quarterback, more consistency, more confidence, gets the job done. They are also number one in the league in defense, but it is not a big physical defense that you'll see today. It's a defense that stretches, as they say, but doesn't break. But they can be had. They had a bad quarter last week against Clemson. Clemson came back and tied them. A defense that North Carolina State wants to keep on the field and control the ball again. North Carolina State, the strength of their offense has been the ground game. They have a great ground game. They have three excellent tailbacks. Vince Evans last week, 200 yards. Joe Green, probably the guy that nobody knows about, a breakaway runner. And, of course, McIntosh been out with a hamstring, but he'll be back today. And, of course, when you take a look at the North Carolina State defense, the problem has been they have not been able to stop anybody, especially on the ground. Tough, tough matchup for State today against the great offensive line of Georgia Tech. They need to put a dent in that rushing game of Georgia Tech today. That's the key to the game. It's a perfect day. It could be a great game. Georgia Tech against NC State back with a kickoff right after this.
Here are the officials for today's game. Your referee is C.C. Daly. North Carolina State has won the toss. They have elected to kick off. They will then get uh, their choice of kicking or receiving in the second half. Mike Popper will be the man to kick it away for North Carolina State as they will start on defense. And there is your defense, Sammy Lilly, 5'9". He is the sophomore standing at his goal line, and we are set to go from Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia. Popper, Lilly at the goal line. 20, got to the 23, had good blocking up the middle, just tripped up. 24-yard kickoff return, and Georgia Tech will start from its own 24-yard line. Let's take a look at the backfield. Dewberry, we talked about him, great quarterback. Lavette is the game-breaker here, easily will start in place of Glanton today. Watch out, and Wizenhut, an excellent blocker and receiver. And they give it to Lavette off the right side. Only got maybe two yards. Pat Teague was the first man in there to get him from his left linebacker spot. And left tackle Raymond Phillips also in there to stack him up. Man to watch on the offensive line. John Davis, they say the center, maybe the best lineman Tech has ever had. Capano, an all-ACC performer, maybe. They say he could make all-ACC this year. Second down, eight yards to go, Georgia Tech. They send both wide receivers to the left side. Now they'll switch them back to the right. Strong side to the lower part of your picture. Again, the toss to Lavette. Blockers in front. Gets to about the 28, maybe 29-yard line. Dwayne Green and Albert Miller up to make the stop. Green is the uh, free safety. They talk about this great offensive line. Let's see what they do. Watch Lavette behind the black shirts. They make a hole for him. He turns up field, picks up three or four yards. The key to the game, we talked about it in the open, the NC State defensive line has to handle the black shirts on the offensive line. Third and five. They split the backs. Lavette and Easley behind Newberry. And Newberry wants to throw his first pass of the game and completes it to his split end. Daryl Norton cutting over the middle. First down, Georgia Tech. Excellent protection for Dewberry on that play. The man was wide open. The offensive line won that particular battle. State's got to do different things on defense. Take a look at the defense. That's a center nose guard, Winstead, in place of the injured nose guard for NC State. He is a key. He has to do a good job against Davis. First first down of the ball game for Georgia Tech. They are the number one offensive and defensive unit in the Atlantic Coast Conference. This is easily the big 235-pound bolt fullback who just pulled up the middle, and Kevin, boy, did they blow a hole in the middle that time. We talked about Davis. We talked about Winstead. This is the key. Watch the center right in front of the quarterback. Look at the hole that opens up. Double team on Winstead, the middle guard, and easily picks up big yardage. Easily not as good a blocker as Glenn, but an excellent runner. That's why he's in there. 17-yard carry and a first down for Georgia Tech at the state 45-yard line. Send Pearson in motion and give it to Lavette off the left side, trying to get outside. He'll get about three before he steps out of bounds at the North Carolina State 43-yard line. These are the linebackers. Bush, the best athlete on the team. Franklin is a little bit short as a linebacker. They may throw over him, and Pat Teague, the leading tackler on the team. We'll hear a lot from Pat Teague. Defensive secondary, they'll get a workout today, especially with play action if Tech is able to run. These guys will have a lot of pressure on them. Flanker back to the right is Daryl Wise. The tight end, Wisenhunt, goes to the right side. And they'll run it out of the eye. On second down and eight yards to go. Easily again. Look at this hole. And this guy can really roll when he gets in the open. Easily with a first down just outside the state 25-yard line. Jeff Gethers was the man who had to run him out of bounds. And boy, easily looks tough this time. And so does Davis, the center. Take a look at him on Winstead. He stands him up. The pursuit overruns, as you see at the top of your screen. Winstead still not in the play. John Davis may be the best offensive lineman ever for Tech. And easily not doing a bad job either. He comes in at 292 pounds, the center of a big Georgia Tech offensive line. First and 10 from the state 26. This is the opening drive. The fake to easily Dewberry on the option to Levette. Levette inside the 20. Wisenhunt out there trying to block for him and Frank Bush knocked him down. 
What does the option do for an offense? It spreads the defense out. It makes the defense go one-on-one. -on -one. Take a look. They fake up the middle. They've been having success. Tie up some white shirts. Look at all the green space out here for Levette. This guy, don't give this guy room. He'll give you trouble. He picks up good yardage. Second down, about two yards to go. He picked up eight. Officially at second and three. Ball left at the 18-yard line. Out of the eye. Easily is the front man. Levette has the football. Good block from Easley. And gets to the 15-yard line. Easily not rated uh, as a as a good a blocker as Keith Blanton, the man who has started at fullback, Kevin, but he threw a pretty good block on that play. That was like a screen block. Mike Blanton is a guy who's not big and strong but has great technique, and he's able to make better blocks, but Easily has shown he can run with the ball, and Tech's offense doesn't fall off too much. The guy who's liable to be hurt by Easley being in there is Levette, because Blanton is the guy that, that cracks holes for Levette. One wide receiver on this play, and it's the flanker back here, a wide, they'll run out of the eye with two tight ends on first and 10 from the state, 15. Levette, their favorite play on the top, getting outside, and just tripped up and will have a flag, and it looks like a clip, as Nelson Jones, the cornerback, cut down Robert Levette, but it looked like there was a clip in the second. And that's the preliminary signal. Very aggressive offense to protect this type of thing will happen. And it looked like Daryl Wise, the flanker, trying to come back from that flanker spot. He was the only wide out. He may have been the one that got in the clip. But well, you don't want to slow down your team by telling them not to be aggressive, but there is a fine line, and if you exceed that line, you get a penalty. Gary Lee, a sophomore wide receiver, is checking the ball game for Georgia Tech. First down. Call was a clip, and it's first and 25. Tech moved back to the North Carolina State 27-yard line. State plays a hit-and-react defense. They did on that play. They hit, and they got outside and made the play. It was good defense by uh, State. Norton, the wide receiver to the left. Lee is the man in the slot. And Dewberry to throw against the blitz. Out to Levette. What a great call against the Blitz and Robert Levette loose inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. And if it had not been for Nelson Jones, it was a touchdown, Georgia Tech. Great call. If you're in a defensive huddle before this play, you should be looking for it. They do this all the time, and you're right, Mike. The perfect call, a little swing pass to Levette. And again, a nice job by the Tech defense here, holding up Levette a little bit and making the tackle. Nelson Jones, a great play. Okay, on this play, what you want to do, you want to hold him up and slip outside. See how Davis did? He made a block, gets outside, makes another block, and now he's looking for somebody else. Back to live action in second and eight after a big pickup. And Levette on the toss again, cuts inside, then back outside to the seven-yard line. Dwayne Green, the free safety, had to stop him. And if people thought that Georgia Tech was a fluke, you can see on this first offensive drive, there is nothing uh, flukish about this offense. Offensive powerhouse. John McCrory made a great play on this meeting to block. Take a look at McCrory in the bottom of your screen, and then a block by Easley. Again, kind of a push screen block. Gives Levette some room. Up he goes. Picks up good yardage. Big play. Third and three. Wisenhunt shifts to the right end. Number nine, the tight end. Dewberry wants to run the option again. He'll keep it, get to the five, the four, and that should be good enough for the first down before Mark Franklin, the inside linebacker, number 48, made the tackle. It's a terrific job by Mark Franklin there. He, what he did was he faked going on the pitch man, came back on the quarterback. Now, Tom Reed told me yesterday that he expects his defense to be on the field, but he would like them to bend, 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 and maybe get the ball back without a score. Well, he's got the first half of that. First drive there, bend, bend, bending. Now we'll see if they can stop Tech from getting in. There is Dewberry, and that's what he did last week, what he's done so far today, is carry the ball for three yards. Dewberry gives it up the middle. And very little gain for Easley. Reggie Singletary who had an outstanding game a week ago against East Carolina, made the stop. Singletary made the big play in that game. The game was still in the balance, and he uh, blindsided the quarterback and forced him off the field. And Phillips picked it up and took off down the field. Uh, you can you can look for him to go over Davis here. I think it's, they're predictable. Capano and Davis are their most valuable linemen. Second and goal from the two. Two tight ends. Lee is the wing back in motion. They'll give it to Levette. Got to the one. And no farther, Dwayne Green and John McCrory 
on the stop. Green, number 11, was standing at the goal line and took a pretty good hit. I told you Levette is not a physical back. He's a tricky back. He needs to be physical here and stayed out physical zone right at the goal line there. Levette's only 190 pounds. When he goes to the pros, he'll probably be more of a receiver than a hard runner. So probably maybe the fullback is the guy you need to look for. Third and goal. Levette behind easily. And it's easily. I don't think he made it. The 235-pound fullback did not get it in, and the center of the North Carolina State defense, led by Winstead and Singletary, stacked them up. You also had Sandy Key in there, number 99. Tom Reed said, bend but don't break. Well, they're bending, but they haven't broken yet. Take a look. They try to get stayed out. They don't. Easley goes up on top. There's not enough room at all the white shirts pile over. Easley did not jump well on that either. Fourth and a foot. Peck will go for the six points. Lee in motion. Lavette touchdown. What an impressive drive from Georgia Tech. They take the opening kickoff and march straight downfield against North Carolina State to score. Mike, most impressive thing about that drive for Tech was that penalty. When they moved them back to about a first and 20, no trouble at all. They came right back, picked up the first down, and then punched it in on fourth down. Those are character builders for the offense, a little bit discouraging for the defense. David Bell on for the conversion. Wisenhunt is the holder. Good snap, puts it down, and Wisenhunt now 10 for 10 on the year. And Georgia Tech lights up the field here at Grant Field in Atlanta. With seven minutes and 43 seconds left to go in the first quarter, our score is Georgia Tech 7, North Carolina State nothing. What this play shows is the difference between Levette and Easley. Levette gets there quicker. State does a good job, but Levette just gets there and finds the seam, and that's what, that's what makes him a great back and what let him get in for the touchdown on that play, 7 0, Georgia Tech. 13 plays, 77 yards. That speaks for itself. 12 17 remaining. And it's Nick Romanis to kick it away. No, they got David Bell out there. Bell is kickoff. Usually it's Romanis, but Bell is out there to kick it away. The deep receivers, Chris Cook and Nasrallah Worthen, and Worthen is the guy to watch number 17. He is number one in the ACC, 10th in the country, averages more than 25 yards of kickoff return, and after that uh, debilitating drive, North Carolina State could use a big kick return here. It's a big series for State, Mike. They need to establish something offensively. Whether or not they get on the board or not is not really that important. They have to show they can move it. Bell, low line drive kick. It gets by Worthen. He'll take it two yards deep and bring it out. Not this time. Gets to the 16-yard line. An 18-yard return for Nasrallah Worthen. And it's Mike Rosemilia who makes the tackle on the Georgia Tech special teams. Esposito, hot and cold quarterback. We saw him against Wake. He didn't have a great game. Evans, over 200 yards last week. Ism is a good blocker. Brown is the leading receiver. Esposito back to throw on first down, a little flip out to Isom. And the fullback is wrapped up by a great defensive player outside linebacker Pat Swilling, who did exactly what he was supposed to do and more. Mike in the pass hurt Isom on that play. That pass was a little bit behind him. Milinicic on the offensive line, a great tackle. Kozar, a key at center, and A.B. Richards may be the best tackle on the state team, maybe the best lineman. They need to move people out today. No gain on that play. The complete pass from Esposito to Isom. Esposito. Good night. Ted Roof on the linebacker. Blitz came through a seam and drilled him. And you will see this from the Georgia Tech defense. They gamble. Ted Roof has some sacks this year. He's a great linebacker, a throwback type of guy. Not real quick, but he gets there, and he does on that play. Big hole. The center has to pick that thing up. Take a look at him there on a little bit of a closer look and a good hit by Roof. Third down, 18. They'll give it to Evans on the draw, and Evans stopped inside his own 15-yard line. Jim Anderson on the tackle for Georgia Tech and listen to the crowd as they give that defense a big hand. And this defense 
is number one in the ACC. They are eighth in the country. And North Carolina State will send in Salmon to punt. Fair catch called for and made by Georgia Tech. Fair catch made by Tim Malden. Let's pause now for a word from your local station. It's 7-0 Georgia Tech, 6.08 to go, first quarter. Mike Patrick and Kevin Kiley with you live from Grant Field in Atlanta on an absolutely perfect fall Saturday afternoon, and it has been perfect for Georgia Tech so far. They took the opening kickoff and drove it right down the throat of the North Carolina State Wolfpack, and now they have the ball in excellent field position at the NC State 47. Lavette. Good blocking cutback in, still on his feet as he gets to the 41. Went down awkwardly that time as he was trying to twist away from the tackle of Benny Pegram, one of the first men in on the spot. Big hole off the left side of this offensive line again. Look at Easley, 44. He makes a block on the outside. Nobody inside to fill, and that's because the inside of that line is cutting people off. Levette always finds the hole. He did then for five yards. Second down, five yards to go. Levette with 31 yards on the day. The leading ground here is easily 38 yards on four carries. Dewberry to throw. Wants to go deep. And they had Isom covered. Double coverage by NC State Green and Jones back on the coverage. And Isom really never had a chance to get to it. One of the improvements in Dewberry is the strength of his arm. He threw two to 300 balls a day in the off season. The strength in his arm. I don't know where he got all those balls, but he, but he did it. Two to 300 of them every single day. And it showed a great improvement in his ability. And also, he's more aware of the defense. He knows what he sees on the other side of the ball. Third and five facing Dewberry. Wide receiver split left and right. And they'll sit Pearson in motion. Fake the draw to Levette. Dewberry in trouble, got away, but he will be shot far short of the first down. Did not make the original line of scrimmage again, and Reggie Singletary and Sandy Key were right there to bring him down. So North Carolina State's defense stiffened and held on that one. State defense, as I said, a hit and go to the ball type of defense. Defeat the block, get off, and pursue. They don't do anything special against great backs or great receivers. They play the defense. Now, you can take advantage of that sometimes, but sometimes, as it did there, it worked. Mike Snow is into punt, averaging 42.2 yards a kick, and Jeff Bird, standing at his own 10, may not get a chance to run this one back. Bird has missed a couple of games with a concussion. High sailing punt by Snow. Bird signals for the fair catch and makes it at his own 15-yard line. I think it was a big series of downs for the North Carolina State defense, Kevin. They were shredded up pretty well on that first uh, possession by Georgia Tech. This time they stopped them. A big series for the defense. Complacency doesn't seem to be a problem. We talked with Bill Curry yesterday for the Tech team. He was worried that they were going to read the newspaper, see how highly ranked they were, and maybe they'd be a little complacent. North Carolina State coming out with a real quick play, and Esposito is in trouble. Throw sideline complete. Hit Ralph Britt, his big tight end. State tried to trick Tech a little bit. They tried to set up the offense before the defense was on the field and ready to go, and it didn't quite work. Very odd play fake, too. Uh, Esposito goes back, and he paused with his back to the defense. I've never seen anything quite like that. He did it a couple of times in the Wake Forest game, but he carried off a, a better fake. He was more nonchalant about it. Esposito this time throws in the flat from Blake to Eisen, and they know where to go. Swarm of Yellow Jackets, and they've called them the killer bees out here, and Roof and Anderson were right out there, the linebackers and the strong side safety, Cleve Powell. These plays are well conceived, he's open, but a lot of these passes are a little bit off the mark, and they're having trouble catching them, having to hesitate, and the defense is able to catch up, that's what happened there, they may have been able to pick up a first down if that pass would have led them a little bit. Third down, four yards to go for North Carolina State, the Wolfpack at its own 21. This is Evans. Maybe two yards, and that is it. And Ted Roof standing in his way along with Pat Swilling. Roof 93 and Swilling 99 are the tackling leaders on a real gang tackling and quick Georgia Tech defense. Roof is a great story. Roof led his team in high school in 1979 with 20 sacks and then shot 69 on the golf team in 1981. A strange combination. Salmon to punt high and very short. Fair catch signaled and made by Tim Maudlin at 
the 50-yard line. North Carolina State's punting game has gotten them in trouble before, and this time it once again puts them in poor field position. Timeout with 327 left to go. Georgia Tech, 7 state nothing. Georgia Tech with a football at midfield. Their third possession of the ball game. They scored on their first, had to punt on their second, and we have 327 to go in the first half. We're at Grant Field in Atlanta, a facility first built in 1914. And at that time, it seated 5,600 people. LeVette got about three. Hit hard by Mark Franklin, the inside linebacker who got a shoulder into it. Franklin's a good story, 5'9", 222 pounds, and you know if they list Franklin, number 48, as 5'9", he's probably 5'7 and That's a half, right. and weighs about 210, but here he is, major college football playing linebacker. Second down, seven yards to go. They like to shift the tight end a lot, it's number nine, Wisdom. Dewberry gives to Levent a little counterpoint. He's got room to run over the right side across the 40. Might be good enough for the first down before Jeff Gethers came up from the corner to make the stop. Linebackers have to get up to the line very quickly. Take a look at the linebackers of NC State. See if they do their job. Franklin gets cut off. He cuts off the other linebacker, and Levet makes big yardage. Middle guard also a key against Davis. Does a pretty good job against Davis, but gets turned. And see as he goes down, here comes Levet. If he gets off that block and into the hole, he might have a chance to stop it. First and ten. Pearson is the wingback. Now he goes in motion. And they'll go to Easley up the middle. Easley fumbled the football. It's still loose, and North Carolina State has it at their own 39. Easley hit after a gain of about a yard and coughed it up. Sandy Key, it looked like the man who caused the fumble, may have been the guy who got it. Somebody closed here on the left side of your screen. Here comes Easley. Linebacker helmet right on the ball. As a linebacker, you try to do that. Boy, if you can get that hat on the ball, that's what will happen. And it's key to make the recovery. Esposito on the delay. And McIntosh, greeted with his first offensive carry of the ballgame, stopped in the backfield. Kevin Henderson came in from a linebacker spot. Boy, these kids are quick. That's the first time, or one of the first times, that State has tried to run on first down. They've been passing on first down. Defensive line for Georgia Tech, very steady. No outstanding performance, but steady. Fake to McIntosh. Throw sideline, complete to Brown. Brown to about the 49-yard line, very close to the first down. Mark Hogan, one of the strong stations up to commit on the tackle. And McIntosh in the ball game, great senior running back who has been troubled by a hamstring pull all year long. Had a chance to be the top rusher ever in North Carolina State history, but uh, barring some miracle games, he's not going to get it now. It's got to be a little frustrating for him, but the place they have talent is in tailback. Right, the difference between Esposito and Evans. Evans had 200 yards last week, but Mac, uh, excuse me, the uh, difference between McIntosh and Evans. McIntosh generates emotion. He's the guy that's been around for three years. He's part of the team, and he's the guy that can get the offense going, get him up emotionally. Here's the measurement. And it's the first first down of the ballgame for North Carolina State with 141 left in the quarter. Bill Curry. He looks so good, doesn't he? Doesn't he? The guy just looks good. He's got to be a great coach. Must be 50 pounds less than when he played in the NFL. He's an excellent center. And has he done a job here at Georgia Tech? He did not rebuild this program. He literally resurrected it. McIntosh hit, slipped off one tackle, got across midfield for the first time in the Georgia Tech territory. It was Kevin Henderson in on the tackle. McIntosh showed a little strength in those legs that time, Mike. What he did, he was hit, but he was able to push forward for a yard or two, and that's something State needs every inch they can get against Tech's defense, and McIntosh can pick him up. Second down, six yards to go. That's what McIntosh has done this year, and it has not been much because he hasn't had a chance to play. Esposito over the middle and complete to Brown reached almost the 40-yard line. Jeff Brown, the uh, leading pass catcher for this ball club, fourth in the ACC. That's now 16 passes on the year, and Mark Hogan, the reserve strong safety, made the tackle. That's Bill Curry going with a lot of uh, second-string people in that lineup right now. That's a terrific pass by Esposito. He was covered, and he hit Brown right in the chest. We saw Esposito have his worst game of the year earlier in the season, Kevin, when he had a terrible time against Wake Forest. But in the other games, he's played much better than that. Wall is the man in motion. 
They now have two flanker backs to the right side. And McIntosh with a gaping hole to the 20, to the 17-yard line. McIntosh blew through there, then made a great move, and Mike Travis had to make the saving tackle. This will happen on short yardage. Watch McIntosh on this play. The hole is there. It's a great hole. He doesn't. He just runs through the hole, but look at the cut. He looked like he had a little trouble with that cut. He might have, if his leg wasn't bothering him, he might have made it. Georgia Tech got caught gambling that time, Kevin. They sent a lot of people. Blocking for states of good blocking. They're just pushing people down. McIntosh up the field. First and 10. Quarterback keeper Esposito still on his feet to the six-yard line. That's a gutsy call. Cleve Pounds made the tackle, and North Carolina State is trying their best to fool the Georgia Tech defense. Ask Tom Reed about the strength of this team, the offensive line. The strength of the team is the offensive line and the tailbacks, and that's what they're going to use today. They're going to push, push, push against that Tech defense. That is the end of the first quarter with North Carolina State on the move, trying to tie it up. We'll be back in Grand Field in Atlanta, Georgia, right after this. And we thank you very much for the welcome. It's nice to be here in Atlanta, especially on a day like this. It's absolutely perfect. Georgia Tech leading 7 0 over North Carolina State, but State coming back with a, a very nice drive. They have reached the Georgia Tech 11 yard line, and they have a second and one. Georgia Tech 6 yard line. Right Full house backfield, McIntosh and Evan are in there behind the fullback, and it's McIntosh inside the five on the dive, and he has a first down for NC State. Jim Anderson caught him on the way down. Mike, you need your hamstrings for a play like that. Evidently, uh, McIntosh's hamstring uh, is feeling better. Tom Reed a little bit happy now. Georgia Tech has used a timeout. I don't think the uh, the defensive captain not happy with maybe the personnel he had on the field wants to go over to talk to Bill Curry. Or maybe a little confused on the wishbone. Here they come out with this wishbone two plays in a row and he wants to know what to do against the wishbone. The wishbone is an easy defense to read, uh, easy offense to read, but a difficult offense to stop because they send so many people at the corners and so many people at the point of attack. And the way you defense that is you just take a run and start and you smash into the first guy in the hole. You try to pile him up and hold hope everything piles up behind him. If they get ruled with the wishbone, if they kick people out and get that lead block up, remember you got two lead blockers, and that can be difficult. Tom Reed want to go against the powerful defense of Georgia Tech. He's going to try and overpower what we call guerrilla offense, and uh, you need guerrilla defense to stop. Tom Reed throwing some new wrinkles in this ball game, and in this drive, they have worked very well. First and goal for North Carolina State. The ball at the Georgia Tech four-yard line. Esposito calling signals. Once again, they'll run out of that wishbone formation. McIntosh tried to get outside and couldn't do it. And the swarming Georgia Tech defense had him. Ken Parker and Jim Anderson were the men on the tackle. Rutten came up from the corner. Watch these guys. All they see, they take a run and start. Everybody comes against the wishbone and they pile everything up. Look at the black shirts, just meeting blocks, meeting blocks all the way along the line. And then they flow to the outside and get McIntosh before he can get outside and get a touchdown. That's the way you defense that wishbone. Force them out of it. They lost a yard. And that's what Tech is looking at. And we've got another timeout as Esposito doesn't like what he sees. Oh, this is chess. <laughs> well, they went out of that, that wishbone offense. They went to an eye then. See, because they didn't have success there, and they had a wide side of the field. Maybe they wanted to come wide with the offense. We'll be back with more with Georgia Tech leading North Carolina State 7-0. We're early in the second quarter at Grant Field in Atlanta with Georgia Tech leading at 7 to nothing. NC State on the move, second and goal, five-yard line, back out of the I formation. And working in motion, Esposito, plenty of time on the roll, guns it, knocked down, oh, what defense. Anthony Harrison back 
there on coverage along with Jim Anderson, and they were right on top of the receiver. I talked to you about the wide side. They rolled to the wide, so wide side, but the Tech knew they were going to roll, and the defense rolls with you. Black shirts, two of them on the receiver. No chance there. Esposito maybe should have eaten that one. Esposito tried to get it to work. Boy, you have to be impressed by the Tech defense. They are very, very quick. Third and goal from the five. Big play here for both teams. Esposito straight back. The blitz is on. Swilling and Root. And those guys aren't good players or anything. Big, big play. They came on the blitz and it got them. Two linebackers getting there. Tech coming with everybody. Esposito does a good job. He tries to roll away from pressure, but the people are covered. And the blitz gets to it. This means Poker will have to come on and try the field goal. From first and goal with the four, we have gone to a 35-yard field goal attempt. Poker, nine out of 11, with plenty of range. And that one has it. Mike Coper, the junior place kicker out of Charlotte, has North Carolina State on the board, but it was a moral victory for Georgia Tech. Right now, we'll pause for a word from your local station. The announcers for this game are approved and selected by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or reception of the telecast without the express written permission of Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Took them a minute 35, and it ended with a 35-yard field goal from Coper. They got down to the four-yard line, first and goal from the four, and had to settle for a 35-yard field goal. But, Mike, State believes in their offense, and there's proof that they can score against that team. Makes a big difference in this game. Coper kicking off Sammy Lilly, waiting at the goal line. Lilly at the four. And got to the 19-yard line. Good kick coverage by North Carolina State. They got down there in a hurry, and it was... Mac Jones, reserve flanker back, and Taylor Derrick. Make it Derrick. Taylor. Sorry about that, Derrick. Sorry, Mrs. Derrick. <laughs> right now, let's pause. Five seconds for station identification. WSB-TV, Channel 2, Atlanta. Dewberry on first and ten, just outside his own 19-yard line. Georgia Tech leading at 7-3. to three. Lebet on the clock. Up. And that's a great defensive play by John McCrory, the strong safety, who came in a hurry. One of the most difficult things to do at a strong safety position is read that run and come up. Look at McCrory, number 20, on the left side, and, and the big pile. That's what a safety does. He makes a pile, and if he gets to the running back, so much the better. John McCrory, great shot. It's a loss of three, so Levette has carried 11 times in net 38 yards. Here's a little tricky play. LeVette ends up with a football. He'll lose yardage again. And North Carolina State showing you some defense. Mark Franklin stayed at home and made the stop. Mark Franklin says if you're going to be little, you better be smart. And he was on this play. This is a good fake by Dewberry. LeVette on the reverse. This play should have worked. If I was on a defense, I'd have been fooled by this play. But Franklin, a little smarter than I am, comes up and makes the play on LeVette. Not a strong back. See how he couldn't pull away from Franklin? Georgia Tech has lost six yards in two carries, and it's third and 16, and in dangerous territory. Let's see what Dewberry decides to do. He'll send LeVette in motion, and he wants to throw. Over the middle, and to Wilkins. It looked like he could have caught it, and Dwayne Green was there on the coverage, but Wilkins was open. He might not have seen the football. Wilkins leading receiver, seven catches. The blocking on this play was excellent. Dewberry has the time, and he gets it to Wilkins. And you're right, Wilkins is one of those black Now, he was looking back into the sun, almost in a direct line to the sun. He just might have missed it all together because he is uh, the leading receiver on this ball club with seven catches. Snow will punt on 4th and 16. Bird standing at his own 45-yard line. 
Snow is a good kicker. Floats this one up in bird. Signals for the fair catch and takes it at the 48. And North Carolina State will have real good field position and start from there. Kevin, the last possession that NC State had, I think, very, very good for them, as you said. It made them believe in their offense. McIntosh was in the game on that possession. Pumps them up emotionally. Evans is a good back, but McIntosh has been with him longer, and I think when that offensive line knows he's back there, they may block just a little harder. First and ten, North Carolina State. McIntosh is in there right now behind Isom, and he has the football. McIntosh slashing up the middle. Inside Tech territory to the 39-yard line, and it was Ricardo Ingram, the free safety, who came up and made the tackle. Blocking at the point of attack, Kozar and Burnett and Johnny Smith, and then McIntosh. Watch McIntosh run through tackles here. People get their hands on him right there, but he doesn't slow down a bit, picks up big yardage. First down state. McIntosh, six carries, 41 yards. And North Carolina State showing very well in the running game here early. Esposito, again, that strange-looking fake throw sideline. Hit Bill Brothers, his flanker back near the 20-yard line. Mark Hogan ran him out of bounds, but a good pass that time by Esposito. There's no substitute for the running game gaining yardage. When the running game gains yardage, you can run those fakes. The defense has to respect them, and receivers will get open downfield. That's what State's doing now. And this is against the number one defense in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Anderson on the tackle of McIntyre. Joe was the top returning NCAA rusher this year, but injured a hamstring against Furman and only has 171 yards on the ground coming into this ballgame because of his limited playing time. He was out last week, one carry the week before that against Wake Forest, so he's had a rest. Second down, four yards to go. Out of the eye. Wall was the flanker back number two, came in motion and then set McIntosh again another big hole and out. McIntosh inside the one-yard line. Travis with a saving tackle, but they are opening it up in the middle of that Georgia Tech defense. And Kevin, we mentioned at the start that it is not a big, powerful Georgia Tech defensive line. No, but it's a big, powerful offensive line for State. Middle guard takes himself out of it. Good block there by Kozer, the center. Center's always the key. That's why he's in the center. He's a good lineman. First and goal from the one. McIntosh, no chance. Not that time. They just stacked him up in the middle, nowhere to run. Many times we've talked about how the defensive philosophy changes inside the 10 and the 5-yard line. The only thing the defensive line wants to do is hold their ground, let the linebackers jump over the top and try to catch the back if he jumps over the pile in the other direction. Georgia Tech on the last possession made a goal line stand from the 4 and forced a field goal, and Esposito will not get in this time either. And it will bring up third and goal. This can get very frustrating. They run a wishbone, and then they try to jump the quarterback over the top. I don't understand that, uh, why the wishbone alignment, because what that does, it brings the defense in very tight because your offense is tight. Tom Reed may have to spread that offense out a little bit, make Tech open up if they want to hold. That state's offensive line averages 271 pounds. Tech, on the average, 256 pounds. So it's a 15-pound difference on the average along that line. McIntosh has come out. They put Evans in. And Evans will have the football. He dives, and he got it. Vince Evans powered off his right side. And North Carolina State sent everybody in front of him. Evans and McIntosh are the same height, Mike, but Evans weighs 11 pounds more than McIntosh. Tom Reed maybe felt a little weight here. Let's put a little weight behind this guy and see if we can get him in. And that's all it is. Evans takes the ball. When he gets back on the ground, it's his weight and his strength that carries him into the end zone. Not bad defense, but hey, they only had a yard to go. North Carolina State has taken a 9-7 lead. Kofer will try to make it 10 and does. And two touchdown underdog North Carolina State has gone in front of highly ranked and undefeated Georgia Tech. Offensive line wants to get underneath the defensive line and lift them up. Let's see if they can do it. The white shirts. They get underneath the 84 Brown. He gets up underneath the defense. Good defense, but great second effort by Evans. And NC State's got to lead this game. There is Evans, the senior out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, who gets the touchdown. It's North Carolina State 10, Georgia Tech 7.
There's the story, nine and a half minutes to go. First half of play, and North Carolina State has taken a 10-7 lead. That drive, again, very impressive. Two minutes and 27 seconds, 52 yards long. This time, they got the touchdown after having to settle for the field goal on the possession before. And Cooper, who has scored for the 10 points, will kick it away. Sammy Lilly, again, waiting deep. His third crack at a kickoff return in this ballgame. Lilly, three yards deep in the end zone. Lee says, let's keep it there. And Lilly will down in the end zone. Georgia Tech will start from the 20. Kevin, momentum has changed. It's obviously on the side of North Carolina State right now. What do you do to get it back? Momentum is emotion. State has a couple of things going for him. We talked in the open about being the hunter and the hunted. Georgia Tech is the hunted. A lot of times you run scared when you're the hunted, and when you're the hunter, you're just looking to get something. That's what State's doing now. Emotion very, very high on the State team. Let's see what Dewberry can do. He'll send Wisdom on his back into the right side. Got Easley and Dewberry behind him and wants to throw. Guns inside, not complete to Norton. Norton drilled out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. John McCrory, the safety over there, pounded him out of bounds, but it will be a first down for Georgia Tech. That pass says a lot about what Bill Curry is thinking. They like to run the ball on first down, but here they've had trouble running, so they go to the pass. Norton's only caught four passes this year for 59 yards. They don't throw to the wideouts. They did here. They're changing their offensive philosophy just a little bit. Dewberry has hit three of five for 41 yards on the afternoon. This time they'll run out of the aisle. Look, that's the deep man. A legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. This time he gets about a legitimate three yards. The first rule of offense, Mike, is to establish something. The run, the pass, the wide pass, the spin, anything. Get a play that gains yardage. The first rule of defense is to take something away from the offense. State now is taking that run on first down away from Tech. Tech trying to establish something. Second down, seven yards to go. Newberry to throw. Has Levette in the flat. They were waiting on it. They got him with a blitz. North Carolina State saw that play coming, had somebody right in front of Levetton and sent everybody else after Dewberry. That somebody was Frank Bush, and State has taken away the running play so they know or they think they're going to pass. Take a look at the inside linebackers here. They drop back, they take away the pass, and on the outside, at the top of your screen, Frank Bush has the has the uh, has Levette covered, and just great defense by State. Now third down and 17. Dewberry straight back. Four-man rush. His arm is hit just as he threw, and it's picked up by Pegram. Benny Pegram inside the Georgia Tech 40-yard line, and Raymond Phillips was the man who got to quarterback John Dewberry and hit his arm on the throw. Pegram, that is two interceptions on the season. Pressure made the difference. The interception was an easy interception. Phillips in Dewberry's face just ran over the blocker. That was easily just ran over him. And of course, that's what made the interception possible. Esposito throws in the flat complete to Isom. Megan Mike Miller, the reserve fullback who's into the ball game. He's cut down after a short game. And North Carolina State once again with a great opportunity. They're right now at the Georgia Tech 34, second and five. Miller the fullback. Green is the tailback. 25. Green with a football. This kid can run. Rutland comes up to hit him, but they don't stack him up until he reaches the Georgia Tech 26 yard line. Player also went on the tackle, number 96. North Carolina State has been very impressive in the early going. Green there, number 25, has the three longest runs from scrimmage since Tom Reed has been the coach, and he's the third string back. He draws a lot of attention there, seven black shirts. 200-pound junior, this time he'll try it up the middle, and he's stacked up by Ted Roof, the inside linebacker. The reason that Green doesn't play is because Tom Reed says that he doesn't have the stamina to go a whole game. He can't take the pounding. He hasn't toughened up enough, and that doesn't mean he's not a tough kid. It, doesn't, it means that he hasn't toughened up to maintain his pace the entire game. He can't keep that in. Second down, 10 yards to go. Probably a passing down for Esposito, and he's on the roll. Looking for Worthen, but he can't find it. Now he can't find anybody. 
and the sack goes to John Clare, number 96. 226-pound junior just kept coming and kept coming. Terrific blocking at the corner by State. State's offensive line did a great job on that play. Esposito had time, but the coverage was there. He maybe should have thrown that ball out of bounds. There comes a point when the quarterback can't complete the pass. He's got to get rid of it before he takes that sack. Third down, now 20 yards to go for NC State. Georgia Tech comes with a four-man rush. Esposito, short pass, sideline complete to Jeffries, but Jeffries will only get to the 30, maybe the 29-yard line. Dante Jones and Ted Roof on the tackle, and this will probably bring on Cooper for the long field goal attempt. The young man's got the leg to do it. He has a long field goal this year at 52. Five others for more than 40 yards. Cooper this time, with the ball spotted at the 36, will try a 46-yard field goal. Five for six for this distance this year. Good place to Several good kickers in the league this year. He's got the distance. But it's wide. Kofer had the leg, but not the accuracy. And North Carolina State will come away with this one without any points. 5-13 to go first half. The score remains. North Carolina State 10 and Georgia Tech 7. Coming up at halftime, I think a piece you'll really like called Romancing the Stone, about the uh, stone down at Clemson. Don't want to give it away too much. One for the books. Another one you'll enjoy. And all the scores and highlights with Chris Plackin, so stay with us. Boy, this has been a good ball game so far. Georgia Tech with the football at their own 30-yard line. Down 10-7. And Dewberry may be tripped by one of the guards who's trying to pull. Got his feet tangled up with somebody and went right down. Middle guard lined up off sides on that play. The middle guard was so far over the ball that he crammed the center, Davis, back into Dewberry. He was literally, his face was over the ball, and I can't believe the official missed that. 450 to go. But Dewberry, see Davis's leg in the left wing. He, just, he tripped Dewberry. He was crammed right back into Dewberry. Second and 13, and all at once, the North Carolina State defense has really been able to shut down this Georgia Tech offense, and they continue to do it. Phillips and Singletary were in on the tackle, and the ball carrier was Dave Passanella, who is a 235-pound ball carrier. Winstead. Ray, excuse me, Kay, was so close to the ball on that play. I think he was offsides on that play, too. He's not giving Davis any room to work. And that's the way. See, the center has to hike the ball. Look how close. Look his face. How close he is to the ball. Pearson in motion. Dewberry to throw. Can't find anyone who wants to run it. Nice move by Dewberry. Gets outside the 30 to about the 31-yard line. Franklin ran him out of bounds. One of the big improvements in Dewberry this year, Bill Curry says, quickness, quickness. He reacts very quickly. He knows what he sees. He doesn't see anything, so he pulls it down, and he runs with the ball, and the kid can run. He's got, he's got about 57 yards or so on the year. Bird is back to receive the punt of Mike Snow. And Georgia Tech will have to give it away again. Rifles this one, driving Bird back to the 22-yard line. And Bird, with an eight-yard return, gets the ball out to the North Carolina State 30-yard line. North Carolina State, Kevin, has really surprised me here in the first quarter. They have been able to do some things that I really didn't think they would be able to do against Georgia Tech, both on offense and defense. Tom Reed said yesterday when I spoke to him, he thought he could win this game. He came in here with a 2-2 record thinking he could beat Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, 11th in USA Today, 12th by the Associated Press and UPI. And that is the highest ranking they have had since the days of Bobby Dodd. They were ranked a little bit higher than that in 1965. Those were glory days, but one has to believe that the glory days are returning. Over Rice, what a job he's done. And Bill Curry is putting together quite a program. The entire athletic program has been upgraded here in Georgia. Rice is the fullback. Evans the tailback. Esposito wants to go long. 
deep over the middle, and he was throwing, and a flag is down. This may be offensive interference as Brothers tried to come back and get the football. Let's check it for you. That's Phil Brothers right there. He had a step on his man, but the pass was underthrown, and he came back to try to get it. And it is against North Carolina State. Sammy Lilly was the defensive back who was trying to make the interception. You think Tom Reed is happy about that call? Oh. <laughs> Emotion, I told you, it's the key to football. So Tom, blood pressure. Yeah. Tom, is that a red shirt or is that his chest? The blood pressure. Could light a match off his forehead right now. Tom Reed really upset, and this play really cost his ball club. Offensive pass interference. Loss of down. Third down. Brothers and Lilly were running stride for stride. The pass was under throw, and Brothers comes back. The rule is when the offensive man looks, the defensive man looks. You can flip a coin on that one, folks. Might have been one of those good no calls. Third down, 20 yards to go for North Carolina State. Esposito in a hole now back at his own 20, and they'll run the delay to Evans, and you can forget it because Swilling was right there. You don't think Swilling was waiting for that? What is the rule here? You wait on the defensive line until the quarterback passes the last man in the backfield. When he passes them and he has the ball, you know it's going to be a pass play. Defensive line of Tech, they're looking for draw and screen. Lee gets in on the tackle. They'll have to punt it away again. Norton disdains the fair catch, and North Carolina State is going to face another penalty here because there is a neutral zone around that receiver, and you have to give him room to catch the football, and Brian Bullock was right in his face. Another judgment call. Now the officials are going to talk it over. There is a radius around that receiver that a defensive player cannot enter. I always thought that if he catches it, he could have caught it. And there is the interference call. It seems to me if the guy catches the ball, then he, then he had enough room to catch it. I mean, that's logical. Five-yard interference, violating the zone. The guy's crazy enough to return kicks. He shouldn't get any protection. <laughs> and Tom Reed... Well, you wouldn't want to be around Tom Reed right now. He is really pumped up, and we may have another penalty on top of it. Here it is. Unsportsman's like first down. And I think that is the result of the protest, the heated protest from the sideline, and all at once, Georgia Tech has moved down to the North Carolina State 36-yard line without benefit of snapping the football. Referee has to use some restraint on that. Reed, of course, his job is to win football games. You don't want to move a team down the field just because the coach is yelling. Easily is the fullback. Lavette behind him. The fake to Lavette. And the pass to the 26-yard line. Dewberry really took a shot and was a little slow at getting up. That fake was a little slow. Exactly right, Mike. Took a long time for the fake. And he gets the ball off nicely. Wizard had a great story. The receiver there, his fifth year of college football, he could get five letters. The first player in modern history to get five letters in college football. We'll talk about that a little more later. The first and ten, Georgia Tech. They're down 10-7 to a fired-up North Carolina State football team. Easily, who had success early. This time we'll get about four. Singletary was in on the tackle. Easily now five carries, 42 yards on the afternoon. Coming into the game, he'd only carried 15 times all season for 79 yards. He's starting in place of Keith Blanton. Second and six, Georgia Tech. The split to that this time to Dewberry to throw. North Carolina State's Nelson Jones pulls off the big play, steps in front of the receiver, and for Dewberry, only his second interception in 1984. I want you to watch Dewberry's head on this play. If I'm Nelson Jones and I'm watching Dewberry, look at Dewberry, look where he's looking. 
the whole time Nelson Jones was watching his eyes. Folks, this thing was so intercepted, you don't even see an offensive receiver there. Nelson Jones is coming all the way. It's a good pass. It's hard, but Nelson Jones read it all the way, came from that corner position with playing zone, stepped in front of the receiver, and off to the races. And this makes Tom Reed's emotion look a little bit better. And John Davis has been helped off the sideline for Georgia Tech, the massive sophomore center. There's a look at him. He was holding his right arm as if he was in terrible pain. His right arm or his right wrist. We'll see if we can get a report on Davis for you. They're attending to him down on the sideline. North Carolina State now has taken over Sports Illustrated Offensive Player of the Week last week. So he went up against the refrigerator at Clemson. And they gave him a new nickname this week. They called him the Refrigerator Moody from L.J., Georgia. Flags are down as Evans bores right up the middle. Cleve Pounds came up from the safety spot to make the tackle. We'll check the penalty. Thrown right at the line of scrimmage. The preliminary signal procedure against State. And penalties in the last two or three minutes have really hurt this ball club. Speaking of time, there's a minute 16 to go in the half. Here's the call. The illegal procedure on the offensive team, only six men on the line of scrimmage, first down. That's not nearly as bad as it sounds. <laughs> Somebody lines up one yard back and you get the penalty. It is first and 15. Let's see if State will keep the ball on the ground and try to run off the clock, or if they'll go for it. And they'll give it to Evans. And Evans really crunched as he got there. Ralph Malone was the first man that had him number 95 around the ankles and held him until help got there. And help got there. Yeah, help always does with this defense. Malone's from Madison, Alabama. He's been injured. He was injured lifting weights. That will happen to a linebacker. You have to lift a lot of weights to be a linebacker. But he's got good speed. Becky's the quickest of linebackers. He's a backup to Anderson. Heaven knows it hurts big. <laughs> Clock running down with two, uh, 31 seconds left to go on second and 13. Here's Evans again over the 40 to about the 44-yard line. That'll stop the clock on a first down with 26 seconds left. Rutland 16 and Harrison 31 up from the secondary to make the stop. Left side of the offensive line, A.B. Richards to tackle over there. Good blocking at the point of attack. You see the double team. All Vince Evans has to do is pick his spot and a little bit of poor tackling by Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has had lapses now. They had a lapse against Alabama. They won the game, but they did have a defensive lapse in that game against Clemson last week. Bill Curry said they played the finest half of football they have ever played, or at least in the last 20 years at Georgia Tech. They led that game 21 to nothing, but Clemson, remember, tied that football game before Tech won it. So this defense is apt not to be consistent. They do have lapses. That's what's happening here against State. They're being run against. There's uh, Vince Evans, and as the third individual to have better than 200 yards a game, his performance last week at 201 was the fifth best all-time in NC State history. Kevin, uh, you, you hear people talking all the time about student athletes, but down here at Georgia Tech, when they say it, they mean it uh, more than anybody else uh, maybe in the country as far as a, a school with uh, athletic tradition and with that academic mountain. They don't want pro football players. They want complete people to come out of Georgia Tech. That's what they're getting. And if they happen to be pro football players on top of it, that's fine. Esposito on third down will throw sideline to Brown. Brown got out of bounds, driven out at the 48-yard line with 21 seconds left. Dante Jones knocked him out. State has a decision to make here. They do have good field position. It's uh, second down. The question is, will they try to get in? Of course, with Hofer, guy can kick from 50, 52 yards. You know that Tom Reed is going to try to get another three points on the board. All they need is another 15 yards, and they are uh, they would give Hofer a chance at it. 21 seconds left. Second and five. NC State. They are leading 10-7. That's Pazito. Whoa. Almost had it picked off. He threw it right into the hands of Glenn Spencer, the defensive end. He reached up, slapped it down, and you see 15 seconds left. I love black shirts because they're easy to see. These guys, the Georgia Tech defense is going crazy. Good block there as he pushes Swilling out of the way. Esposito's feet are starting to move. I told you about quarterbacks. When those feet start going up and down before they throw it, it means they're nervous. Now your feet move at the same rate as your heart does. Yeah, that's right. 
was given up the middle and only about only reached the 50 yard line and north carolina state decided they were not going to gamble on this six seconds and the clock is burning and that is going to be the last play of the first half and north carolina state as tom reed leaves the field and you can bet tom reed may have a word with somebody and does because he was hit or somebody along the sidelines on his ball club was hit with a 15-yard penalty that could have had a big impact on this on this game. We're guessing, but Mike, I think it's a good guess that it was Tom Reed. A motion like that on the sidelines, if you don't care, if you don't show emotion, your team may go flat. They may not show emotion, but there's a limit to everything. If it goes on for a quarter, you lose the impact. And Tom Reed still yelling, screaming at the official. That's in the past. He still has the lead. Let it go, and let's get to the rest of the game. Of course, he's going to be fired up when they go in the dressing room at halftime. He has his ball club 2-2, two 0-1 and two, oh and one in the ACC. And we said it was a big game for them. If they go 0-2 oh in the Atlantic Coast Conference, very difficult for them to have any hopes of uh, doing anything at all this year. Atlantic Coast Conference is the key word here. We've got just about every team. Duke's had enormous injuries, and they right. may be in big trouble. Every one of these teams in the conference could win the is championship. Right. This is a pretty good football conference. If you look at who the Atlantic Coast Conference has been beating the last couple of weeks, you'll see some pretty good teams. So State, Tech, Maryland, all these teams are going to be in there for the conference title race, maybe down to the last three games of the year, and we've got some pretty good ones coming up. Georgia Tech jumped on top. They took the opening kickoff throw 77 yards, as I recalled, and scored. Looked like it could have been a blowout. All at once, NC State says, all right, we'll start playing with you. Success breeds complacency, maybe a little bit of a problem for Georgia Tech. Knowing Bill Curry, I think he'll take care of the complacency at halftime. All right, right now, let's check in with Chris Clackham and see what he has for us here at halftime. Well, what we got coming up for you at halftime, where our score is Georgia Tech behind North Carolina State 10 to 7. We have got a story on a love affair with a rock at Clemson and a comeback, an ACC comeback by this North Carolina State Wolf Pack that's good enough for our weekly feature, one for the books. So stay with us. We got a lot more. We'll be back with ACC 84 right after this. Chris Clackham, thank you very much. An excellent job as always, and a nice interview with Mr. McKay, and he will be a fine addition to this Georgia Tech football team. Kevin, it's an even Steven story on the statistics. That's the story. <laughs> it's even. <laughs> these guys are uh, these guys are are playing them dead even. Turnovers for Georgia Tech. Three turnovers. Uh, a little bit of a surprise, I think. Tech, not so much that Tech is flat. They're playing a good game. NC State sky high. If they can maintain that pace in the second half, we're in for a barn burger. North Carolina State will have the football as we start the second half. David Bell will kick off. NC State with the two deep from Chris Cook, number six, and number 17, as Rollo Worthen. Worthen is the runner. A lot of speed, averaging 25 and a half yards of kickoff return, but this one drives him out of the back of the end zone, and NC State will have to start from the 20, and Bell really got all of that one on the kickoff. I said in the first half, the defense has to take something away, and the offense has to establish something. In the first half, NC State's offense established the ground game. You can bet Bill Curry and the defensive people for Georgia Tech are going to try and take that ground game away from State here in the second half. The tailback is Evans. McIntosh was the leading ground gainer in the first half, and Evans stacked up. And just as they did on the first series, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket defense swarming to the football. Jim Anderson, the first man there, but boy, they get there in a hurry. Pat Swilling turns it in on the corner, and Anderson, number 91, watch him come right in the middle of your screen, head to head. That's what linebackers do best. Turns Evans around and sends him going back in the other direction. Loss of two, second and 12. Been a tough day for Evans so far. This is Esposito. Time to throw, dumps it over the middle, and under throws his flanker, Ricky Wall. Had Wall open on the little slant over the middle, but he didn't get it to him. Had the blocking, Esposito short arm that ball. Uh, Tech, again, it, it, this is kind of a microcosm. It's a simple type of thing. You take away the run, and you play pass. Esposito had a good first half. He's 9 for 12 now, but he was 9 for 11 for 60 yards in that first half. Control pass, and he did a good job. Microcosm, is that a word you use whenever we are at Georgia Tech? Yeah, that's something that's on your toothbrush after you finish brushing your teeth. <laughs> Third down, 12 yards to go, and a flag goes down as Spencer poured through there. Milenicek uh, jumped on the right side for state number 71. 
uh, 6 by 295 it's kind of hard to miss the uh, Malenic they can't even get it's a good thing he's so big get his name on his back there <laughs> cost him guy. five here's the call dead ball illegal procedure the offensive team third down and it's third and 17 in North Carolina State going the wrong way and there's Malenic whoops <laughs> feeling even bigger when he does that Brown goes to the top of your screen. It's third and 17. Esposito may have been changing the play and gives on the draw to Evans. Evans breaks the tackle. A flag is down, and so is Evans as he reached the 18-yard line. Clee pounds up from a safety spot to make the tackle. We'll check the flag. Could have been a hold where the flag was thrown. And it is. Preliminary signal. This may be declined by Georgia Tech because it'll bring up a fourth down. One of the knocks on the state offense has been that it's too predictable. Holding on the offense, decline, fourth down. Third and long, the last thing that you say when you leave the defensive huddle is watch out for screen and draw. Everybody knows it's going to be screen or draw, so what does he have to do? He has to hold them, and there you see it. And Marty Martinison will come in to punt. The first punt he has had this year, he was the kicker for two straight seasons. Martinison gets off the kick. Norton with the catch went down to one knee and was then planted at the 48-yard line. Hit by Brian Bullock, a big defensive tackle down on special teams. And Georgia Tech, as they have had so often throughout the day, with tremendous field position and listen to the crowd trying to fire up their ball club. And giving that defensive unit a little bit of an ovation. Tech, conversely, has to reestablish LeVette in the second half. This is the rest of our lineup for October. Some great matchups right there on the screen. First and ten, Georgia Tech. Dewberry, who had a rough first half, calling signal. Sends Lee in motion and gives to LeVette. LeVette stacked up as he went off the left side. Raymond Phillips on the tackle, the big left tackle, the junior, 6'4", 245, had him around the ankle. And Kevin LeVette has had very little success in this ballgame. 14 carries, 39 yards in the first half. He got two on that one. They took him out of the game. They took him out of the game, stopped the running attack, made Tech go to the passing game. Second and eight, and Dewberry to throw. Complete to Norton. Norton to the 30-yard line. First down, Georgia Tech. Jeff Gathers on the tackle. Norton is the only wide receiver that has multiple catches the entire year. He's the guy that they should be guarding against, and yet they give him all this room. Look at the space Norton has, number one. Good pursuit, but they get the first down. Guard that guy. Go tight on him. It's a good look at the senior. Only 152 pounds. Very consistent receiver with good hands. He's made some tough catches. Wilkins, number 80, is in the tight end. He's to the right side of the screen, and they'll go out of the eye. And they'll go absolutely nowhere. Again, Phillips, the first man on the charge, and John McCrory, the strong side safety up there in a hurry. Davis injured in the first half. The center is back in the game. The story of this game is the NC State defensive line. They're handling the offensive line of Georgia Tech, a very fine offensive line. We've hit on it. Not only is Davis an excellent offensive lineman, but Thomas and Capano and Blazing, Ivan Meyer, all these guys can make it block. Second down, 11 yards to go, and Lovett has had all sorts of problems. He's one of the leading ground gainers in the country. They make it to a miss time. And it's picked off again. Another interception for North Carolina State. Nelson Jones picks off another pass that is three on the day for North Carolina State, and the second for Nelson Jones. Tom Reed, like the defense that pressures the offense, that comes when you pressure the quarterback, you play the receivers tight, and this is the type of thing that happens. Dewberry throws the ball, but Nelson Jones is tight on Wizenhut, and he's right there. If he could have kept his balance, he's down the sideline for a touchdown. And that was a great play by the defensive back. Timeout, it's still tech State 10, Tech 7. North Carolina State with the lead and the football at their own 31-yard line. Tom Reed in his second season with a 5-10 and 10 record. This could be the biggest win of his career if his club can pull off the upset. That was a little dump-off pass to the fullback, Isom, and he was wrapped up by Cleve Pounds, number 32. 
Lee Pound's a great story. Lee Pound was a backup tailback last year. Last year, last season, they moved him to safety uh, for Georgia Tech. He's a starting safety, one of the leading tacklers. He's got an interception. He's playing just great football. McIntosh is now the tailback behind Isom. They fake it to McIntosh and Esposito with time and a completion over the middle. Jeffries with the football into Georgia Tech territory at the 41-yard line. Haywood Jeffries, the 200-pound sophomore. Can't say enough about the offensive line of state. Look at the protection for Esposito and look at the hole in the middle of this zone as Jeffries is out for a Sunday stroll. Ball right on the mark. Now that play has been open a few times and Esposito has missed it. That time he didn't miss it. Anthony Harrison, the free safety, way, way off of him that time. And it's a first down for State. McIntosh off the right side. He's got five and more. Had to be stopped by Mike Travis, the left corner who came up. In North Carolina State, their offensive line doing the job. Remember, Georgia Tech is not a big defensive unit. No, but this state team is a lot different from the team we saw a couple of weeks ago. Look at how physical they are and look at the hole. They And everything they do is working. Back to live action, and they get near the 30 with McIntosh again on the carry. Very close to the first down, and they have it. Have to go back to McIntosh. He's really a key for this team. They've just, they, since the first quarter when he came in, they just seem to have gone to a different level. They've raised themselves up. They have confidence in him. They know if they make the blocks, McIntosh will find the hole. And it's a different team with him in there. It's our first chance to see him with McIntosh. And it's no rap on Vince Evans, who was a quality running back. But it, as you say, you played with a guy for so long. He's been your leader for so long. And when he comes in, you really get pumped up. And there is the first down. It takes time to establish rapport over the years. He dressed with these guys. He eats with them. Uh, Evans hasn't been around, hasn't been a key member of the team for that long. So McIntosh uh, definitely making an impact both emotionally and physically on the field today. As the score splashed around the country, it's going to surprise a lot of people. Two tight ends in the ball game right now. If they give it to McIntosh over the right side, room to run, got maybe five before he's forced out of bounds. Rutland was over there, so was Cleve Pound. Right side of that line, Burnett. Milinicek on the right side. They come down. They take care of Lee. You can see that. Now they go to the corner. People leading from the other side, pushing the black shirts off the line of scrimmage. And you don't need to see the ball carrier to know that there's plenty of space there. You, and when you see a lot of green on the screen, that means they're doing their job. North Carolina State doing something else very important right now. They're keeping their defense, the weakest unit they have, off the field. McIntosh again, not this time. Got just a couple... Ted Roof and Anderson had him around the ankles. Pat Swilling, number 99 for Georgia Tech, is their pressure guy. He's the guy that they like to rush the passer and play the run. He's a defensive end linebacker in the up position. Takes the lead block from Isom. Turns it in. Does a pretty good job, but maybe could have stuffed that block a little better. Third and two. Again, two tight ends worth it. The burner is on the outside of the flank. And they'll give it to McIntosh. First down and more. Inside the 10-yard line before Cleve Pounds knocked him out of bounds, and there is a flag down at the spot of the tackle. NC State really showing us something this afternoon. And the preliminary call, a personal foul against Georgia Tech, that will move it inside the five. NC State just taking it to the Tech defense. Now, it's not like this hasn't happened before. They're 3-0, but Clemson handled them a little bit, and they've had some problems defensively. State seems to have found the formula. Ball marked at the four, and here's the call on the penalty. Dead ball foul, personal foul, defense, first down. Jeff Brown, 45, and Ralph Britt, 84, are the tight ends. The lone wide receiver is Ricky Wall, and McIntosh has now reached 95 yards on the day. Has a chance to add to that total here. McIntosh near the goal line, got inside the one. Spencer and Rutland on the stop, but McIntosh behind excellent offensive blocking up front gets to the one. Difficult to imagine how much Joe McIntosh does mean to this team. Right. He's literally a different team out here. We saw him two weeks ago. They were flat. It was a close game, 24-15 to Wake Park. They didn't seem to play the way they're playing today, certainly. 
Now has 98 yards on 15 carries and will be stopped short this time. Nice job by Mark Hogan, who came around the wall of blockers and hit McIntosh before he had a chance to take off. I love the goal line defense. It's so simple. And you just, all you do is run in the direction of the ball carrier. Take a look. Just stuff them. And that's what the black shirts did. They stuffed them. Third down and goal from the one-yard line. Remember, State has had problems in this area. And look at the mix-up on Georgia Tech. Having a, having a problem sending players where they ought to be. Five touchdown. Georgia Tech on that play almost had three men out covering the wide receivers, which left ten against eight. They did have two out there, Mike. They had two guys out covering a wide receiver on goal line defense, which obviously is not what you want. You go man. You don't need double coverage, especially when it's on the half-yard line. State's got him on the run. McIntosh with the touchdown, and Mike Cooper. here's the play. Very simple, jump as high as you can, get the ball over the plane, McIntosh knows what to do. Once again, Hogan came in from the side, got a hand on him, but couldn't stop him. And Cooper adds the point after. So North Carolina State now has the 17-7 lead over 11th ranked Georgia Tech. Let's give the credit to the offensive line. Stack them up, give them room to jump. McIntosh will do the rest. Give him a spot to jump from and get him up over the line. And State leads it. Go McIntosh. Now, a, a hamstring for McIntosh, that's a good point, that the hamstring has got to be healed, Mike, in order for him to jump that high. He's obviously pretty healthy today. Right now, let's pause for a word from your local station. Seven to go, third quarter. North Carolina State underdog by two touchdowns, leading by 10 points here in the third quarter. And another impressive drive that went 69 yards. McIntosh capped it with a one-yard dive. Cooper added the point at 17-7. And now we will find out about Georgia Tech's offense, whether they can come back or not. I believe it's the first time they've been the kickoff to Lilly drives him eight yards deep in the end zone, and he will stay right there. The Georgia Tech will have to start from the 20. Tech has had four turnovers today. Dewberry with three interceptions. He only had one interception in the first three games. Had been completing almost 60% of his passes. And here's what's happened on the turnover. Ten points. It's led to ten points to field uh, uh, the turnovers, and they lead by ten points. State has a ten-point lead, so that, I think that probably tells you what's going on. And Dewberry is back to throw on first down. Sideline, nice grab by Isom. Bug Isom gave himself the nickname. He could have given himself any nickname he wanted to, <laughs> and he gave himself Bug. Right now, let's pause five seconds for station identification. First down, Georgia Tech, 31-yard line. Levette has been virtually shut down. This is the fullback easily, and he is stopped in the backfield. Phillips got to him first, along with Mark Franklin. Went to a split back formation. This play was very slow in developing. Easton just didn't get off, did not get off the ball quickly enough. And Tech is out of that eye formation. Levette is an eye back, a great eye tailback, and they're getting out of the eye formation. Now they're going back into it on the play. Easily at 41 yards in the first half. He lost three on that one, second and 13. Pearson, the flanker back in motion. And they'll go to the toss with Levette. And Levette nailed as he got near the line of scrimmage. And it was John McCrory who has had an outstanding game at strong safety. He's an All-American walk-on from Sports Illustrated. How do you stop the I formation with the great back? You come after it. Get in the backfield. Watch the white shirts appear to the left of your screen. A whole bunch of them. Stack them up. Levette, not physical. He's not going to pull out of a lot of tackles, and they take him down again. Third down, 11 yards to go, and Georgia Tech's offense has had a tough afternoon against the fired-up Wolfpack defense. Newberry on the run, completes the bug ice at the 50-yard line, and that was a tough catch. The 
because Nelson Jones really caught him in the small of the back at the same time the ball got there. Tough catch, tough throw. Dewberry does a great job getting away from pressure. Watch number 11. He pulls up, gets a block, throws the ball, kind of lost it, and it's an excellent pass as Isom's on the receiving end before he goes out of bounds. Roosevelt Isom Jr. For the catch. He hated the word junior, so he went to buck. And here is Levent with a chance to run for the first time in a couple of quarters. And down to the North Carolina State 43 where Martin Franklin got it. That was the pass, and the run will reappear. Make them spread out. Think about the corners. Think about the sideline. Ice of two nice catches on the sideline, and Levent suddenly is able to run. Levent misses Glenn. Glenn's a good, good blocker. He's not been in the game. He's banged up. Ethan has replaced him. He's not such a good blocker. Wilkins, the man moving across the formation, the tight end in for Wisenhut. They'll run out of the eye. Give it to Levent again. Big hole this time, and Levent to the 35 to 34 yard line. Winstead, the nose guard, trailed him from behind and made the tackle. Excellent block by 79, Peter Blazek on the line, and then he gets a good lead block from Easton and help there. Makes the cut, as the great backs do, and as you see there, Blazek had wiped out some of the pursuit. There was a big hole, and uh, Levette was able to get up in it. First and 10, Georgia Tech. The fullback easily really popped as he got to the line of scrimmage. Phillips was the first man to hit him and stood him straight up, and then Pat Teague finished him off for NC State. There are lots of ways to play defense. Tom Reed's philosophy is, if I can explain it to you very simply, attack the blocker and get rid of him and pursue the ball. In other words, you beat the block and then find the ball with your eyes and chase the ball. That's it, simply. State's doing a good job of it today. Lovett up to 96 yards. Make it 56 yards, brother, on 19 carries. That's a lot of work. Trying to go outside, no sir. And once again, it was Raymond Phillips who was doing an outstanding job from that left tackle spot. He's only 245 pounds. He's outweighed every play, but he has been in there all afternoon. He needed to gain 25 pounds to get up to 245. And this is a good example. Phillips is a good example of a guy who's getting off the block. Levent very deep in the backfield, and Phillips gets rid of his blocker, takes it down, and makes the tackle. That's great defense by Smith. Third and nine, passing down for Dewberry. Splits the back. Five-man rush. Got his hand Norton very close to the first down at the 24. It will depend on where they mark it. And it looks like they have marked it maybe a foot short of the first down as Nelson Jones made the tackle. Robert Levette crosses in front to the left there of Norton and clears the space for him. Norton comes underneath and he's wide open. A good throw by Dewberry. Levette has a lot of benefits, you know, not just running the ball. He can draw the defense away from where the ball is going. Here we get on that play. Fourth and less than one. Two tight ends. Tech will not go for the field goal. They want the first down. Send the flanker in motion and give it to Lovett. First down and more. As he hits the 21-yard line. Franklin had him around the ankles, but he couldn't save the first down run. 4.23 left, third quarter. Tech trying to gain some ground. Behind Davis, Thomas, and Ivermeyer. Good blocking by the black shirt. Easily leads it up in there. Number 20 picks up the first down and about three more to the 21-yard line. I think John Davis, the center, is hurt. He came off the field. It looks like he uh, injured his uh, right hand or his right wrist early in the ballgame, and he is not playing all that well right now. Levent up to about the 16-yard line. Benny Pegram, the outside linebacker, and Mark Franklin, the inside linebacker, in on the tackle. One of the drawbacks about being a great player like Lafette or John Davis is when you get hurt, if you leave the game, the other defense gets in the huddle, and I used to do this, they say, we got him out of there. He had all that publicity, he's a great line, but we got him out of there. Let's play even harder. Davis has a responsibility to stay in there until he can't walk. Second and five. Still the two tight end offense and out of the eye, piercing the man in motion. Easily. Big hole this time. Right behind is big center John Davis and the two guards, John Thomas and Tony Campano. And they cleared it out, Kevin. 
Sean Davis is the center, takes on the middle guard, gets a little double team, and here comes Easley. Levent has had success. He goes wide. They send Easley up the middle for good yardage, number 44. Not a great blocker, but he's run for some good yardage today. 46 yards on nine carries. First and goal, Georgia Tech at the state nine-yard line. Lee in motion. Easley again. Looked like he had some room, but State closed in a hurry. When Clemson tied the game last week at 21 after trailing by 21, Tech won the game, and they won the game with a late drive, and they ran the ball all the way down the field. They did not throw. They have the type of offensive line that when they need points, they can suck it up and pound on that defense, and I think that's what they're trying to do today. But remember Easley, the guy that fumbled early in this game, but he did drop the ball once, that's got to make Texas a little bit nervous if they get close to the end line. That's Benny Pegram being helped off the field, the 228-pound senior who has had an interception today. And he was very, very slow getting up. We have 250 to go third quarter. It's NC State on top of undefeated Georgia Tech 17-7 from Grant Field in Atlanta along with Kevin Kyler. This is Mike Patrick. Hope you're enjoying the telecast. It's been an excellent ball game so far, full of surprises and great defensive effort by North Carolina State. You've got to get them all the credit in the world. Second down and goal, seven-yard line. Then Wilkins, the tight end in motion, give it to Levet, left side, dragged down, and it's Franklin again. Boy, has he had a ball game. Franklin may be too small to see. He's only about 5'9". These guys may be just running by him, missing him. He's a tiny guy, not, not tiny in weight. He's about 222. Franklin's 48. Try and pick him up. There he is. He gets depth. He gets into the backfield. Easily missed him, number 44 in black, and Franklin makes the play. Big play here, third goal from the five. Newberry sends Wise in motion. Gives it to Levette, tries to go up the middle. Got to very close to the two-yard line. And this will bring up an interesting call. Pat Teague was in on the tackle. This will be fourth and goal from the two. You're down by ten. Do you go for the field goal? Two yards a long way. The reason that I was thinking rollout on that is because it gives you, the play doesn't show immediately. A handoff shows immediately, gives the defense a chance to react and stop the play. If you roll out, you have a number of options. And I think that's, well, they're down by ten. They'll probably go for the field goal. And they've got David Bell in the ball game. Bell, seven out of nine on the year. Got this one up and through. Georgia Tech has pulled within seven points with one minute and 11 seconds to go. Third period of play from Atlanta. Our score, NC State 17 and Georgia Tech 10. Chris Blackham on the sideline at Grant Field with an update from Death Valley. Talk about surprises. North Carolina, the last team to beat Clemson at home, is all tied up with the Tigers 3-3 at halftime. It's been a tough three-week stretch for the Tigers, hasn't it? Yeah, not such a surprise. Uh, we no. saw North Carolina, a tremendous, enormous amount of talent on that team. By the end of this year, you can bet they'll be vying for the title. There's a scoring drive, 16 plays, 78 yards. That is a typical Georgia Tech drive. Problem was, they only got three points on a 19-yard field goal. Bell sets up to kick it away from the 40-yard line. David with a 19-yard field goal. There is Cook, and number 17 is Nazarello Orthon. And Bell has been in the end zone a couple of times to prevent Worthen, who has blazing speed, from getting out there. This time he may be able to return it. Worthen at the goal line. Stopped at the 16-yard line, and Georgia Tech did a nice job getting downfield. Bart Jones, a defensive back, Sammy Lilly, number 37, in on the tackle. We'll need to watch the Tech defense on this series because the Tech defense has been pushed around today and now within one touchdown, they need a good stand and they need to stop this offense. Key drive here. McIntosh is the tailback. Ricky Ison will pull back in front of him. McIntosh. Got a few. Dante Jones was in on the tackle, came from the linebacker spot. Donnie Chisholm, the nose guard. 
was also in there. Dante McIntosh, Jones. Now over 100. Excuse me, Mike. Dante Jones. They call him Sweet D. They say the ladies like Dante, so they call him Sweet D. He's from Valdosta. Went to Valdosta High School. Oh, what a great high school program they have had over the years. McIntosh now 101 yards on the day. Esposito on the roll. Throw sideline complete to Brothers. Brothers. A couple of juke moves and gets out over the 30 to about the 33-yard line. It will be a first down for North Carolina State. And Esposito seems to be much more in control on the passing game this week than when we saw him earlier in the season. Well, he has a running game, Mike. Anytime you run that play-action fake, as you can see here, he had plenty of time. Anytime you have time, it's just a matter of throwing the ball out. Good job by Brothers here as he picks up a block and gets downfield. We are told that uh, we may be having some video problems and everyone else who is doing uh, anything by satellite today may be having video problems and will for the next 10 or 12 minutes or could be for the next 10 or 12 because of the placement of the satellites something very technical that we don't understand and have no intention of trying to explain to you I told him not to send seven people up in one prep. <laughs> That's right. 28 seconds to go third quarter state by seven over tech North Carolina State with a seven-point lead and the football. 24 seconds to go third quarter. State with the ball at its own 32-yard line, first and 10. Fake to McIntosh. Esposito floats it out there and completes it again. It's Jeffrey still on his feet. Jeffrey to the 40, to the 38-yard line before he's driven out of bounds. Dante Jones and Anthony Harrison back on the coverage. But Jeffries did a nice job that time, made sure he wrapped up the football and then stayed up. People probably wonder why the spin move gets you free. As a defensive player, I'll tell you why this works. Jeffries, first of all, is wide open. The spin move, see, if you don't wrap your arms, it reduces the impact. Back to live action. And it's McIntosh to the Georgia Tech 30-yard line. Lying on top of him, John Clare, number 96. But McIntosh now up to 19 carries and 110 yards. And the third quarter has come to an end here at Grantfield, Georgia Tech, and State with a surprising 17-10 uh, lead. Right now, let's pause for a word from your local station. We're ready to start the fourth quarter in North Carolina State leaving. Heavily favored Georgia Tech, 17 to 10. Great day for Esposito so far. 13 out of 16, 131 yards. A very good controlled passing attack. And McIntosh has rushed for 110 yards. Here comes the blitz. They give it to McIntosh, and they stack him up at the line of scrimmage. And I think Georgia Tech may have to go back to more of that, more of the gambling defense to get something to happen. If you are having uh, problems with your reception at home, it is because of satellite difficulties that should clear up in about a minute and a half all by themselves, so you don't have to do anything. It is a, a particular way the satellites are set up in space, and there is a North Carolina State defensive player down on the turf. try to point out who it is until we're sure of the number. There's uh, Coach Tom Reed, and he's seen his club, Kevin, have quite a day. They have really done a job. It's amazing how true to form NC State has played. The strength of their team is the offensive line and the back, and that's what's carried them the entire day, and a, and a great effort from the defensive line. It's Johnny Smith, the left guard, a 260-pound junior. And he'll come off for a breather under his own power. State at one time or another today will have 10 actual freshmen. That means a year out of high school, in and out of this game. Makes it even more amazing that they played as well as they have. Big play here. Third and one at the Tech 30. Out of the eye. McIntosh, the tailback. And he'll have the football. Leans in. Looked like he had the first down near the Tech 28-yard line. Center of the line stacked him up. But he followed Ricky Isom, who doesn't carry the football very much, but he does a nice job blocking. He also followed Kozar and Burnett and Malinichek over there, a 6'5", 295-pound tackle. That's the guy I want to follow. <laughs> yes, right. You get behind him and he blocks the sun. The Tech defense took a running start on that play, trying to stop him, and still I don't believe they did. It looked like he picked up the first down. They will measure, but he looked like he had it. 
spotted the ball just across the 29-yard line, and here's the measure. Stretch him out, and they've got it by the length of a football. First down, North Carolina State. Right side, Burnett, 265, Milanichek, 295, and Isom. Number 33 makes the key block. McIntosh, as all good backs do, finds a little bit of a hole, and by about three-quarters of a football, a first down for State, a big one. State leads 17-10. They are already within range for a fine field goal kicker by the name of Mike Coper. Esposito wants to throw. He's got room to run if he chooses and does. Now he's forced out of bounds. Took the hit from Cleve Pounds instead of just slipping out. Mark Pike was in the game, number 39 for Georgia Tech. He got cut down at the corner and that allowed Esposito to just roam to the top of the field, do what he had to do. Gain of three for Esposito. Only averages about a yard and a half to carry. He is not a runner. And that's Rollo Worthen is the flanker back. That sets up for the slot. And they'll give it to McIntosh again. Just powering forward. Great effort by McIntosh to reach the 20-yard line. Tech had him stacked up. Mark Pike was in on the tackle that time. But that was a lot of just individual effort on the part of Joe McIntosh. Leg drive for McIntosh. The one thing the other backs have not given him. He's got a little more power than both Green and Vince Evans. And he's showing it today. Third down, a little over a yard. Another big play. And they come out in the eye. McIntosh, 117 yards rushing against the number one ranked defense in the conference. McIntosh again, first down. Just inside the 18-yard line, another good block by Isom and another good job by that front line from North Carolina State. Number one ranked defense in the entire ACC. White shirts making holes all day. Milinicek, number 71, and here comes McIntosh. Look at 71, just pushing the black shirts back. McIntosh falls over his own man, or he's down the road. And this is also the eighth-ranked defense in the country. Being pushed around pretty good right now by a North Carolina State team that is really pumped up. McIntosh, little delay counter inside the 10. To about the nine-yard line, Ted Roof, the first man there, and then gang tackled, but very close to another first down for NC State. 67, Larry Burnett, the right guard, left side of your screen on number 94. 67, he buries him, and McIntosh picks up good yardage inside the 10. Burnett made that play by himself. 67, right corner of your screen. Look where he ends up on this play, on top of the defender. Second and two inside the Tech 10-yard line. Wall in motion. But McIntosh will get the football to nearly the five. And that will be good enough for another North Carolina State first down. Travis and Parker, the left end, in on the tackle. Another impressive drive for straight as they uh, state as they go to their strength. They go straight is what you say. Straight to the goal line is what you wanted to say. Intimidation. Uh, when you play, when you play on the defense and the offense, you know you're only inches apart just before the play. And a lot goes on in those couple of inches. A lot of things are said, a lot of looks. And after a while, when this is going on, you, you don't want to look at the offensive guy's face. First and goal. Ball spotted officially at the six-yard line. McIntosh, big hole. Closed quickly as he got to the two-yard line. And once again, it is Ted Roof. Fine junior inside linebacker. Roof's the type of guy, he's not happy unless his nose is broken. On this play, kind of didn't get his nose in there, but he got his shoulder in there again behind Burnett and Milenichik. Good blocking. Kozar's done a great job at center. Back to little woozy. He's carried it 26 times, probably needs a breather, and now they'll go to that wishbone setup again, and Evans is in there. Evans with a football, dive, touchdown, North Carolina State. Big, big series for the Wolfpack with 11-17 to go in the ball game. They have taken a 13-point lead. Big surprise. Play defense against the wishbone. If they get any space, you're dead. Is there room? You better believe it. Evans, a hole in the defense. He dives through it for a touchdown. Looks like one of those things out of the circus where you go through the hoop that's on fire. 
Here comes the point after from Kofer, and he drills it straight through, and North Carolina State on top by 14 points with 11.17 to go. Wishbone, three people in. First two guys block. They do the job. They get the black shirts low enough so that Evans can come over the top. He lands in the end zone. No question about that. The ball and the body over the plane. Evans has not run a great deal today. McIntosh has run on most of the heavy work, but down near the end zone, Evans has been effective. And he has two touchdowns on the day. Timeout. We now pause for a word from your local station. Chris Clackham with an update now from State College in Pennsylvania where the Nittany Lions are out front of the Maryland Terps, but only by a score of 14 to 10. Maryland and Penn State, that's been a very good rivalry over the years. Penn State normally getting the best of it, but this afternoon leading by four. Frank Reich is out of that game. Stan Gelbach probably doing a good job. He came in last week, did a brilliant job coming off the bench. Sammy Lilly for Georgia Tech. They could use a big return. Lilly regains his balance and gets up to about the 26-yard line. That's a fine effort for that young man. Almost tripped up inside the 20. If he could have gotten his balance back just a little bit quicker, he had room to run. This is great athletic ability. Lilly, if he could have got outside a little quicker, look at the white shirts as they just get a piece of him here. Just a piece of him. Lilly, great athletic ability just to keep his balance. Turn those shoulders upfield, Sammy. Too late. But a good return to the 25. Georgia Tech needs two touchdowns, and they've only got 11 minutes and 10 seconds to get them. They'll start from their own 26-yard line. Newberry on the naked reverse. Throw sideline too high for Norton. Covered by Jeff Gethers. Thirteen plays, 84 yards for State, 454, a running drive, ate up almost five minutes. When State gets the ball back, Georgia Tech's going to be in trouble if they haven't scored any points. A concerned Bill Curry looking on, his ball club 3-0 and after including wins over Alabama and Clemson ranked 11th in one hole, 12th in two others, and now in danger. Newberry sacked in the backfield, could not find a receiver, and it was Frank Bush, the first man to get him. Sandy Key, the nose guard, was also there. Pressure defense all day by State. They're making Dewberry make decisions. He barely gets his feet set. Maybe could have stood in there a little bit longer. He has to make a decision to run. It's not a good one, and State catches him. Third down, 11 yards to go. Big play here for Georgia Tech. Ten and a half minutes left. Dewberry under pressure, and they've got him inside the 10-yard line. And it's Brian Bullock, a 238-pound sophomore with maybe the biggest play of his career, and the sack on John Dewberry. Teams change when they're ahead and when they're behind. When you're ahead, you can dictate what goes on. When you're behind, they know you're going to throw the ball. State's coming out of the ground. They know he's going to throw. Good pressure. And that's the result right there. Dewberry never even a chance to set up. Georgia Tech has to punt it away. A high floating kick. Bird coming up and will take it in great position at the Georgia Tech 37-yard line. And State already leading by 14 points. This could be some kind of upset at Grant Field in Atlanta. Back after this. Okay, Chris Blackham again on the sidelines with an update from Richmond. The Wake Forest team and Deacons who were defeated last night by, last week I should say, by Maryland are on top of the Richmond Spiders by a score of 15-9 at halftime. Thank you, Chris. Here's what we have to look forward to the rest of the month. Next week, North Carolina at Wake Forest and NC State at North Carolina. That shapes up as a good ball game. State with the football. Esposito chased out of the pocket, throws sideline and completes it to his tight end, Ralph Britt. State has two purposes in mind right now, I can tell you. They want to eat up some time off the clock, and they would dearly love to get at least another three points. That could almost ice this ball game if Cooper can hit a field goal. It's almost it raises a great call by Tom Reed and the offensive people. They've been running the ball at will on first down. They went with a pass, but it's wide open. Gain at five. Brit the tight end, shifting to the weak side. The short side of the formation. Esposito again to throw, throw sideline, and again complete. He's got Brothers dancing around, still on his feet, reaches just about the 25-yard line. That will be good enough for a first down. Anthony Harrison 
had to make the tackle. And boy, they pulled it on him again. Showing a lot of confidence in Esposito and his ability not to throw interceptions. Tech cannot be expected to cover this the way they've given up yardage on the run. They have to pinch inside. They have to be thinking run. Tom Reed knows that. He goes with the pass. It's open. Ball spotted at the 25-yard line of Georgia Tech. First down, NC State. Wall in motion. McIntosh, big hole inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. May get Vince Evans into the ball game instead of McIntosh. You may be asking, where are the black shirts? There they are before the ball snap. Let's see what happens. Big hole on the left side. A little pull there by the guard. Milinicic with a good block. And down the road they go. Tackle made by number 32. Lee Pounds. He makes a lot of tackles, but you don't want to make them downfield. And Georgia Tech has to use a timeout. And that's something that could hurt them down the road with only 8.23 left. I don't think they had the defense out there they wanted, so they had to burn one of their three-second half timeouts. The clock stops with 8.23 to go. It's North Carolina State by 14. 8.23 left. The scoreboard at Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia. And the Tech fans didn't think it was going to be this way. Neither did Bill Curry, although, Kevin, he told us this could very well happen to his young football team. Second and two for NC State. Evans is the tailback behind Isom, and Evans has the football. And a first down. He gets to the 10. Mike Travis, the left corner, had to make the stop. But North Carolina State now beginning to dominate. Burnett and Malinichik on the right side. They both come down on the middle. The defense is just not getting there. Look at the black shirts as they back up. You can't back up on defense. You've got to come forward and meet it at the line or in the backfield of the offense. Not happening for the black shirts today. Esposito has had an outstanding game at quarterback for North Carolina State. McIntosh well over 100 yards and Evans in there now. A tailback has also run well. This time he's stacked up after a game of less than a yard as he just got inside the tent. Everyone for Georgia Tech in there. Swilling the first man that hit him. Spencer is in there. Ivory Lee, the nose guard, also on the stop. Tom Reed's got a problem. He's got three tailbacks that can run the ball up and down the field. Evans, McIntosh, and Joe Green. He uses them well, I think. He uses Evans inside uh, when he gets inside the tent and dispel McIntosh. And, and McIntosh showed me something today. I was wondering why they didn't start Evans. I think I know now. That's right. McIntosh is an outstanding back. Bill Curry uh, coming down to earth today, I think, with his Georgia Tech team. Second down, nine yards to go. Georgia Tech needs to get the football. This is Evans. Bodies pushing forward to about the six-yard line. Lee is down there on the stop. Kevin Henderson. Clock is running. We're under seven minutes. 6.54 and turning. In the event that Georgia Tech does lose this game, one of the problems with being 3-0 and is that that first loss seems like such a large loss. When you're 3-8, and they tend to be smaller like last year. And it seems like a crushing loss, but this is a fine football team. These guys are going to roll for the rest of the year. It's a pretty good football team. North Carolina State has used one of its three second half timeouts. And Esposito will go over to talk with head coach Tom Reed. What a remarkable job they've done at, at Georgia Tech rebuilding what they say uh, a few years ago was a football program that needed to be re rebuilt from the ground up. Homer Rice, uh, Homer Rice invented the triple option. I didn't know. He, he invented the triple option and uh, it was a great football. And it's not even a rebuilding, uh, to be honest about it. The football program is almost non-existent here. Almost down to the point where uh, they either had to rebuild it, either had to rededicate an effort to it, or say, let's just skip it and get out of it all together. And they got into the Atlantic Coast Conference, uh, a team that had been in the, in the Southeastern Conference for a long time and then been independent, got into the Atlantic Coast Conference, and of course, uh, Georgia Tech is a great addition to the ACC in a great city of Atlanta. Their basketball program has done a great job, too, on the body front. Third down, six. Flag goes down, and so does Evans at the five. He was tripped up by Sammy Lilly. Bad choice by Evans on that. It was open inside, maybe to the goal line, and he chose to go outside where he was tacked. Check the flag for you. Preliminary signal is against North Carolina State. 
but it would bring up uh, either third and 11 or fourth and five. You saw Bill Curry. Illegal procedure on the offensive team, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Refuse, fourth down. You saw Bill Curry uh, wave his hands, decline it. Uh, they want him to get that field goal rather than go for the first down. It doesn't make any difference for Cooper, I don't think. Not hardly, not unless they penalize him another 40 yards. This will be a 22-yard attempt, and Georgia Tech has been sending a man flying in there from one side, from the uh, lower side of your picture, trying to block. He's come close a few times. Not this time. A flag goes down. Georgia Tech may have been offside. We'll check it as Cooper connects on the field goal. And it was against Georgia Tech. Desperately trying to block that kick. And they're going to turn this one down, I'll guarantee you. Defense offside. Field goal's good with little eyes on the kickoff. Five yards. Cooper with the field goal and North Carolina State now leading it 27 to 10. Boy, there's going to be some people uh, shaking their heads around the Atlantic Coast Conference looking at this court. What about the Atlantic Coast Conference? That's a good point. North Carolina in a battle with uh, with Clemson. That thing's even to this point. Virginia 3-1 and one going into today. Wake Forest, we've seen them twice. That's a good football Texas team. White. Maryland? Maryland. Well, Maryland, of course, in a battle with Penn State, trailing by four as of just a few moments ago. And here's NC State, considered a weak link, and now they're beating the devil out of Georgia Tech. Timeout with 618 left to go from Atlanta. MC State by 17. Let's give you a corrected score from Richmond. We've got the Wake Forest Demon Deacons out in front of the Richmond Spiders. At halftime, it's 22 to 9. Thank you, Chris. There's the scoring drive. A scoring drive that may have wrapped up this ball game that resulted in the 22-yard Cooper field goal. It made it a 17-point lead, and all that means Georgia Tech has to score three times in the next 618. That is a tall order, especially since they've only scored twice already. There is Cooper, young man. has had a fine day. He is an excellent field goal kicker and a good kickoff man, too. Sammy Lilly. The deep man now standing five yards deep in his end zone, and I doubt that Georgia Tech will down anything this time. If they can run it out, they'll run it out. Cooper crushed this one and knocked it out of the end zone, and for the first time this year, we will see that penalty. The ball will come out to the 30-yard line, and I think Cooper forgot he was kicking off from the 45 instead of the 40. Think he's pumped up a little bit? Just a little. Let's go! They changed the rules this year, trying to encourage kickoff returns instead of strong-legged kickers who could put the ball in the seat. That time, Kofer got carried away and knocked it into the stand. Still takes the ball out of Tech's hands on the kickoff return. Sure does. Dewberry is back to throw. Quick sideline to Levette. No, uh, now they alley up to Levette from Isom. And it didn't go anywhere as Benny Pegram was over there. Uh, that play should work. That sure should. <laughs> I mean, I'd be fooled by that. Hit and react. White shirts, they hit, and they've got enough people out here to stop it. Look at Pegram. He goes right by the receiver. That's playing defense with your eyes open. You keep open, you run around, you see what's going on. Gain of only four on that play. And here's the whistle. Tech may have taken too long to get this play off. And it's a procedure call against the Yellow Jacket. When things start to go wrong, they just steamroll a little bit, and that's been the case, especially in the second half with Georgia Tech. They've had some turnovers. Dewberry has thrown some bad passes. Dead ball, Frank. foul, illegal procedure on the offense. Second down. Hold it up, hold it up. I'll wind. <laughs> Second and 11. Dewberry back to throw. Three-man rush, and he is clobbered from behind, and it'll be ruled an incomplete pass. That's a good call. His arm had started full. Dewberry clobbered by Benny Pegram. 
white shirts have been everywhere today simply everywhere they cover the receiver look as they get out on Levent and then they pressure the passer a remarkable effort by the North Carolina State defense which was considered a weakness coming in they've been a strength today and we're told that was Singletary on the sack instead of Peter 91 and not 96 third down 11 yards to go Dewberry again under pressure has to dump it off and easily can't hold the football Pegram is over there right in his face have to throw that ball harder I'd have been scared to death out there easily standing there with the defense looking at him and he lofted it out there Dewberry one criticism I have of Dewberry today a lot of his passes have been a little bit off the mark kept the receiver from going upfield a little bit with it and that pass was a setup to get his chin knocked off Snow will come in to punt and Jeff Bird is waiting at the 34 yard line 5.33 to go. North Carolina State with maybe its biggest win ever under Tom Reed, almost in the bag, leading 27 to 10. Coaching is a very difficult profession, Kevin. People are always on your back no matter what your philosophy is. If you don't win, they're not going to like you a whole lot, and they're not going to give your program a lot of money or a lot of support. And this is going to help Tom Reed up in Raleigh a whole lot. And it shouldn't hurt Bill Curry, I would hope, down That's right. here in Atlanta. I would hope not. Because the job he has done down here has been absolutely magnificent. North Carolina State with the football at their own 37. Now give it off to Green, who is in a tailback, and he reaches the 45-yard line. Kevin Henderson on the tackle. No loss of intensity, that offensive line of North Carolina State. And there they're huddled around their coach. A.B. Richards, number 55, was 25 yards downfield. He's an offensive tackle. He was in the middle of that pileup. Second and three. Ison, the fullback. Green, the tailback. They do bring some tailback to North Carolina State. This is Green on the little delay. Laying in wait for him, the center of the Georgia Tech defense. Ivory Lee was in there. Getting up off the pile, Kevin Henderson, number 45. Make it third and two. The ball spotted at the state 46-yard line, and Esposito goes back to the huddle with his ball club. While we have the chance, I'd like to thank our statisticians, Mike Wood this afternoon, our spotter Bob Langford, and our stage manager, Nikki Nichols. Keeping it straight up here in the booth. 419 to go. In the ball game, fumble by Esposito, and he got it back. Kind of a break Georgia Tech really had to have was to pick up a loose football and things are not going their way in the second half. State has been remarkably mistake free today. These types of mistakes. This would have been a big play, but as so often happens when the ball's bouncing to you, it, it bounces to you. And it did right. for Esposito. Tom Reed holding his head, maybe got a little headache on that play, holding his ear or maybe listening to upstairs. What do you hear from upstairs? Probably good things right now. I would imagine. Somebody asked me that the other day. What I've never been a coach with a headset on, but I would imagine that they do similar to what I'm doing now. They'll sit and they'll, t they'll talk about what's going on on the field, who's open, who's not open, who's dominating. They feed that to the head coach because he's on the sideline and he doesn't have that good of a view. When things are going well, you probably hear a lot, and when they're not going real well, there's probably a lot of silence upstairs. So look at that wolf there. It's a hot day. What do you think is going on inside that suit? That was pretty nasty in there. Marty Martinez <laughs> will punt. And Daryl Norton, the 5'9 senior, waiting at the 20. Yeah, that's uh, that's warm weather gear. I mean, that's cold weather gear right there. How do they make wolf suits out of? I hope it's not polyester. You'd think it would be sheep, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Georgia Tech with 10 men on the line of scrimmage. And they're coming. They don't get there. And Martinison unloads. Just kicked the air out of it into the end zone. Not only did he get it off quick, it just kept going. You don't think he's happy? Here's a young man who has not had a chance to play all year long. They let him in in the second half of this ball game, and he has some happy teammates. He just won the job back with that kick. Talk about satellites in the wrong position. He almost hit one of them. 4.05 to go in the ball game, and it's North Carolina State with what to some people is going to be just a stunning upset. 27 to 10 over Georgia Tech. 
Tech came in ranked first in offense, first in defense in the league, nationally ranked in almost every category. Here's Dewberry on the scramble, trying to find some place to go, and wrapped up as he got to the sideline. Tough day for Dewberry. Benny Pegram, who was, uh, ever since he was injured and they had to help him off the field when he came back, he has really done a great job since then. All right, this is why Dewberry has to pull the ball down. Number one, running down the field. Looks like he's open, but he's not. And Dewberry really doesn't have a chance. There's a shadow for you, a couple of shadows. Dewberry hasn't even had a chance to go back and stand there and look downfield before the white shirts have pressured him. Really has a big problem, but really hasn't. And North Carolina State will be the beneficiary of this penalty. Spot. Let's check it out. Hold it on the offense. The penalty was enforced. Out of the foul. First down. So Georgia Tech deeper in a hole, although it's an academic pursuit right now with 3.55 to go and down by 17 points. They have the ball at their own six. Here's McIntosh, who had a great day for North Carolina State. Dewberry hustles it out over the 20 to about the 23-yard line before he's rolled to the ground. Brian Bullock chasing him. There's a quarterback draw. No thought of throwing the ball on that play. Took a step back and went upfield. Worked pretty well. Hurry up offense, second and nine. Three-man rush. Dewberry has time this time. Throws complete to Norton. Gathers with him at the 40-yard line. Norton's a good-looking wide receiver. Young man caught a few balls today. 5-9 C. This game could help Tech. This game could help Tech. Curry was worried yesterday when we spoke to him about the effect of the 3-0 record. Uh, Tech needed to be brought down a notch. He felt it was hard to hold his people down. I don't think he'd, uh, he'd want to think they needed to be brought down quite this far. <laughs> Wilkins on the catch. Make it Pearson. What you can't do in practice sometimes happens in the game. Unfortunately, you have control of your practice and not the game. Well, no need for play action here. State knows exactly what's going on, but they run it anyway. Dewberry getting to the line of scrimmage, giving the defense a little thought that he might run. That brings him up, and the receiver gets open, and he hits him. First and 10 at the State 40-yard line. Dewberry to throw again, this time over the middle, and Wilson Hunt is a tight end, and he's going to go all the way. A 40-yard touchdown pass from Dewberry to Wilson Hunt. Got a couple of nice downfield blocks, and it's touchdown Georgia Tech. That play's been open all day. Wilson Hunt's been running around loose down there, but Dewberry never had a chance to turn around and find him. On that particular play, they gave him a little bit of room, and he was able to get into the end zone. Wilson Hunt, big guy, 230 pounds. Wizard Hutt's the guy that's got the fifth year. We talked about January 26th. He was ready to go to an NFL camp. Instead, he found out he'd be here another year. Now they'll go for two. Easily, the lone remaining running back. They have Levette on a corner. Dewberry and throws short, and a flag is down. We're going to have an interference call, I believe, against North Carolina State as they were throwing for Gary Lee in the end zone. Green was very close to him on defense will check the penalty and it's interference against Georgia Tech. Offensive pass interference. Loss of down. Oh, the, way. the point's no good. Fellow needs to smoke a cigar and get his voice down a little bit. A little high. Wizard Hunt, number nine, open down the middle. Franklin Short, number 48, couldn't get his hand up high enough. And Wizard Hunt, as you said, Mike, picked up a few blocks and gets into the end zone. Wizard Hunt is no petunia. Hey, this guy's a big guy, 6'3", 230 pounds. Dewberry had a chance to set up there. He sets up strong. And Franklin, the little guy, number 48, just couldn't get up high enough to get his hand on the ball. And from there, it's good run. This guy is a pro prospect and was going to go to an NFL rookie camp the day after he was told he had another year of eligibility here at Georgia Tech. Ken Wisenhut, that's his fifth year. He could get five letters in football. He was the quarterback of record when uh, Tech tied Notre Dame a few years ago, 3-3. He was a quarterback, played a lot of positions. He's an excellent athlete. Highly recruited quarterback in high school and has become a tight end here at Georgia Tech. There's the story with 310 left. The spread is 11 points. And Georgia Tech will most more than likely go for the onside kick here as the crowd comes to its feet. Right now, let's pause five seconds for station identification. 
WSB TV, Channel 2, Atlanta. Onside kick. Don't try to pick it up. Just fall on it. That's what they tell you when you're on the receiving team. Nick Romanis will try the onside kick. It's not going to go 10 yards. It goes out of bounds. It's got to go 10 yards before the offensive team can receive it, or it's got to touch an offensive player. Rather, it has to go 10 yards before the defensive team can receive it. Or it's a penalty. Correct. Now, North Carolina State getting the options. Preliminary signal is a legal procedure because the ball was kicked out of bounds. They will decline it. They get the ball. That's right. Offsides on the kicking team. And also a kick out of bounds. Illegal procedure. Kicking team declines. First down. So North Carolina State will have the football with 3.10 to go. The only gamble Georgia Tech could go for, the onside kick. They still need two more scores. And State lining up in a hurry. And Georgia Tech has got to get its other players off the field. And they do. Esposito with Green. The tailback behind him. That's worth it in motion. Give it to Green. Plows into the center of the line, down to about the 42. It's stacked up. This point of the game, this point of the game, here's a scoring scoring drive. Four plays, 80 yards, very impressive drive. Of course, the 40-yard pass to Wisenhut from Dewberry didn't hurt. Uh, brings them within 11. This point in the game, the offensive back after the game, his, his forearm looks like a road map from everybody scratching at him, trying to get the ball. Uh, it can be really a physical time for a running back. Second and nine. Green gained the yard on the last turn. Esposito wants to throw. And overthrows worth it. No, Jeffries. Little surprised that they would throw the football in that situation. As a matter of fact, I'm very surprised they would throw. There's a man who surprised Bill Curry. You see, what do we have to do here? You know Tech is stacking against the run. I guess Tom Reed does too, but it's a matter of time. That's right. They still need two plays, uh, two scoring plays to, to get back and win this game. 2.29 to go. You have to wonder. To stop the clock on that play, and it could give Georgia, uh, Georgia Tech an extra 30 seconds if they can get the football back. May not be a factor, and then again, it could be. Flag is down, and it's procedure against State. I'm wondering about procedure. They didn't snap the ball. I think it was too much time. They've been getting in out of the huddle very quickly today. Dead ball, foul, illegal procedure. Someone got in neutral zone. Third down. Saying someone, it must have been the man in motion, Haywood Jeffries. They said he was in the neutral zone. Well, remember, though, you have to be set for one second. Doesn't really matter. Well, that's interesting. Though. Third and 13, clock stopped with 2.27 to go. And Esposito will give it off on the draw play to his tailback. Back and pass, loose football. And Georgia Tech has it at the 44-yard line. Georgia Tech recovers the fumble with 2.21 to go. And this baby may not be over yet. I told Sammy you. Lilly, the man who recovered. I told you it was a physical time for running backs. Here's a physical shot. Whoa. Oh. Yes. What number? That's Roof, I think, or Anderson, number 91, that made the hit. And now this ball... Great thing about a football team, it's not round, it can go anywhere, drive you crazy. Here, Sammy Lilly is the one that gets the handle on it. It looks like he may have landed on it and knocked the uh, wind out of him. Uh, Somebody of then him. landed on him. Big recovery for Georgia Tech. They have the football at their own 44-yard line. Time is their biggest enemy. They're down by 11 with 2.21 to go. They still need two scores, so they need to score here and then try another onside kick. That was, that was Jim Anderson. 6'1", 230, made that hit. The linebacker, super hit, super hit. Right now, let's get down to Chris Clackham for a score update. Chris? Yeah, what we got right now, Mike, is uh, an update in the Penn State-Maryland game. The Nittany Lions are still out in front of the Maryland Terps by a score of 25-18. to 18. The game's in the fourth quarter. Tough place to play up there. The Georgia Tech sideline and the crowd trying to get their ball club fired up. Lilly being helped off the field. Looks like he's all right. 
I think he'll be fine. He may be late for the dance tonight, though. <laughs> Lily, Lily has been a cheerleader all day. Been standing out on the field, waving his arm, getting the fans uh, cranked up. And nothing got him more cranked up than that fumble recovery. Big series here with 2.21 to go. Georgia Tech needs to strike in a hurry. Watch Wizenhut and Lovett downfield. Lee, the flanker back in motion. Dewberry, quarterback draw. Gets out of bounds at the 47-yard line. They must have thought they spotted something there that could give them a big gain in a hurry, but whatever they spotted disappeared in the same amount of time. Not a bad call, except for the risk that from the center of formation, Dewberry would take too long or not be able to get out of bounds. That, that's a, a big thought there. But I think what they saw was the middle guard for State picking sides on the center, Davis. And he, if he picked one side, Dewberry was going to go the other way. Right now, Andy Hearn is in at that center spot, number 54, Davis. If you remember, he hurt his arm or wrist earlier in the ballgame. Dewberry wants to throw again over the middle. To the 28-yard line. Wizenhunt, same pattern that he ran before. Dwayne Green made the tackle. The clock stopped with 2.09 to go. Here is the hurry-up offense. Oh, this could be a great finish. Dewberry to throw again. This time with a little time, has to run. Cut down as he got to the 19. The clock running. 158 left. Frank Bush tripped him up. Tech in that hurry up offense. Now the referee will stop the clock because the ball is loose. Haven't heard much from Frank Bush today, but he's the best athlete on the defense. He showed you why there with a super attack. Dewberry calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. We're inside two minutes. Dewberry to Easley. Easley to about the 17-yard line, forced out of bounds. It'll be another first down. More importantly, it stops the clock with 1.43 left. Reggie Singletary ran him out of bounds. Levette on that play, they went to the short man. They ran uh, easily short and Levette down the sideline. And with East and with uh, Wizenhut uh, doing what he's doing on the other side, they're putting some pressure on the state pass defense. Ball just outside the 16, first and 10, Georgia Tech, 143 left. The Yellow Jackets down by 11. Dewberry for the end zone and overthrown. Tried to hit Pearson, had him in the corner. Frank Bush made the play. Frank Bush came in and deflected that pass within Dewberry's face. It's amazing how you don't hear about these guys, and then down the game gets a little close, and all of a sudden Frank Bush starts to make his presence felt. Hogs is the offensive line. Uh, a lot of hogs in the ACC. That, that's the H-A-W-G-S. I guess a play off the dogs from Georgia. Uh, the offensive line's name is the Hogs. Newberry on second down from the North Carolina State 16 yard line. Time to throw, throw sideline complete. It is tight end, Gary Wilkins. And once again, the clock stops with a minute 34. Dewberry wanted to go downfield on this play. Minute 34 to go. Dewberry, look at Dewberry look downfield. He's looking, he's looking. A great check off here. He hesitates and bang, he gets the ball to the receiver by the sideline for a uh, for a timeout. That was a, an excellent check off by Dewberry. Third down and three. And they're going to run the ball with Easley. Tried to cross him up. It didn't really work. He's probably going to have the first down. Raymond Phillips made the tackle. Well, in college football, Mike, the uh, first down stops the clock. It's a good call by Tech. They get the first down, they stop the clock. Dewberry on first and goal from the five. Lost the ball, tossed to Levette. Levette cuts it back inside. Great move by Levette. Touchdown. What a move by Robert Levette. Holy cow. What a move by Georgia Tech, two touchdowns. Oh, Levette just showed you why he is a great running back. He made a cut on a dime on AstroTurf, gave him a nickel change and six points. <laughs> and now they'll go for two, it's 27-22. Tech to pull within three points. Levette is the tailback, faked it easily. Dewberry in trouble, look at this scramble. He's got Levette wide open. 
the interception is not going to make any difference. You cannot score defensively on this play. The pickoff was by Dwayne Green. Levette was open, wide open for a minute, and Green really hustled over there to cover it. Tech has closed within five with a minute 20 to go. Hold on. Robert Levette, a great call by the Georgia Tech offensive people. They have time to run the ball, and Levette gets in. A good move, as Mike said. Tremendous athletic ability by Levette. We'll see it again here. Number 20. Let's watch number 44 easily. Let's not watch. A minute 20 to go. 27-22. Now, they missed two two-point conversions. The net result of that is a field goal will win it for them. That's how big the extra point is. Let's go down to Chris real quick. Okay, Mike, we've got another update from Death Valley. Just about nine minutes left to go in this game. The North Carolina Tar Heels are out in front of Clemson. Six to three. The state of North Carolina is doing pretty well today. Thank you, Chris. And Kevin, you said North Carolina with a lot of talent. By the time we got to this point in the season, they'd be showing it. Awesome talent. The last team to beat Clemson in Death Valley 21 games ago, North Carolina. They have a 21-game winning streak at home, and if you've ever been there, you know why. It's a tough place to play. Apparently, Carolina knows, knows what to do in, in uh, Clemson. There's the man of the moment, David Bell. He will try the onside kick with 1.20 to go. This would rank as one of the great comebacks in the history of not Georgia Tech, but college football. They were down 17 points just a couple of minutes ago. They don't need to get this onside kick. I believe they have a couple of timeouts left. They don't need to get it. The two timeouts left. They want to keep this ball in play towards the middle of the field. Make the defense make a decision. Here's Bell. It goes 10 yards. Is it loose? It looks like North Carolina State has gotten it. The flag has gone down. Well, what they think they're going to call here is that it didn't go 10 yards, but State has the option of coming up and getting it on, after it goes 8 or, or uh, 7 or 8 or 9 yards. And if they touch it, there's no flag involved. Right, absolutely. What they tell you, I played on that team, the onside uh, receiving team. And State has the football. What they tell you to do is fall on the ball. Just fall on it. Don't try to pick it up. Disregard the flag. No penalty. This is, a, this is excellent, this excellent play by the receiver. He goes to his knees, and they fall on it. Two or three of them, that's exactly what you're supposed to do with an onside kick. Don't get fancy, because the other team's going to try and blast you as soon as you touch it. Here's the story. 117 left. Georgia Tech can stop the clock twice. So State will be able to run off some time. The last possession, McIntosh fumbled. The Georgia Tech got it back. This time they'll protect the ball as best they can as Tech goes for it. Stack them up in the center and they'll use their first timeout. Ted Roof, the first man to hit him. 109 left in the game. Georgia Tech down by five. And Bill Curry looking calm and collected as he has been throughout the entire ball game. I'd like to put a fluoroscope on him and see inside, though. Well, this, those last two touchdowns meant so much to the Georgia Tech program, but I think there's some skepticism about Even how they fine a team, right? About how fine a team they have at Georgia Tech. And remember, last week they lost a 21-point lead, but they showed the type of guts that a football team needs to have. They came back and won that game after it was tied. They've done the same thing here. They look like they were out of the ball game, and bang, a touchdown, and then this drive, eight plays, 56 yards, a minute and one second. Second, and they got in in an interesting way. Two running plays. They had enough presence of mind to go in with two running plays with less than two minutes to go. And the scoring drive that proceeded, that only took 55 seconds. They may have gotten a late start, but they're trying to make up for it. Great foundation here at Tech. Just great foundation. Very solid program. Uh, these guys have a lot of pride in their team, and that's what happens when you come back late. It shows pride, determination. Second and nine, 109 left, Georgia Tech with one timeout remaining. They can stop the clock just once more. They'll give it to Evans, trying to get outside, and they'll roll him over as he reaches the 47-yard line. And Tech will not use this timeout now. They'll wait till after third down, and the clock will tick away. And State will probably take a penalty here. That was an interesting call, too. That looked like a counter or a little bit of a draw. And if you get, the, the longer the play takes, the more possibilities you have of something going wrong. Uh, it seems to me that maybe straight handoffs are in order here. Third down, eight yards to go. The clock ticking away. We're inside 40 seconds. Look for Esposito to the ball on the football. Going as long as...
as he can, waiting for the officials to signal, and then he goes down. Esposito hits the knee. Clock continues to run. It's down to 19 seconds. Somebody's got to call timeout. The scoreboard indicating Georgia Tech has a timeout left, but the scoreboard must be wrong because Georgia Tech is not calling timeout, apparently cannot, and that is going to be the last play of the ball game. and North Carolina State has pulled off a big upset, Tom Reed being mobbed by his ball club, and that gentleman deserves a lot of credit for what happened today. He really did a good coaching job, Kevin. He threw a lot of wrinkles at Georgia Tech on their offense, and his defense really pumped up, and Bill Curry and Tom Reed shake hands at midfield great job by nc state offensively you're right mike they crossed them up a little bit but basically they ran that uh, straight power running game with mcintosh doing most of the work up the middle defensively it was a matter of emotion very aggressive hit go to the ball they did exactly that took robert levett out of the game very early although he rushed for 100 yards he did not rush for big yardage when it meant something when they were trying to come back, he was picking up yardage, but Levette was taken out of the game early, and that kind of crippled the Georgia Tech attack. The final score is 27-22. North Carolina State with a big upset win. Let's pause for a word from your local station. It's 27-22, the final. North Carolina State over Georgia Tech. And Chris Clackham is down on the sidelines with a very happy man, Tom Reed of North Carolina State. Chris, you might ask him, uh, Kevin and I have been conjecturing if this has not been the biggest win since he has been at North Carolina State. And you might ask him that. Let's get down to uh, Chris Clackham and Coach Tom Reed. That's right, Mike, and I think that is a great first question. Is this your biggest win since being at North Carolina State? <laughs> I think it's a very obvious question. Without a doubt, it is the biggest win we've had. It's... Uh something we had to do we came back in the fourth quarter last week and we hung on to win this one and uh you know we're, i can't say how happy i am for our players and the coaches who've done just an outstanding job how much hair did you lose there in the final minutes of this game with georgia tech coming back the way they did well it's just one of those things i lost a lot but uh uh you know i'll be wide awake for two days but i won't feel a bit of pain let me ask you something. We talked in the but before this game got underway. You told me Joe McIntosh would not start, but he would play. You said, Chris, we got to get this guy going slow. Okay, we got to start him off slow. I think you forgot to tell Joe McIntosh that. Well, Joe, by slow, I mean we weren't going to put him in right away. We we're going to let him get his you know nerves down a little bit, relax the muscles because of the pulled hamstring, and then get in there and play. And he did an outstanding job for not running for almost three weeks. So does he look like uh, he would start next week against uh, Maryland? Possibly, but you know we got Vince and Joe Green too. And that's a very pleasant situation to have with those three backs and they all are different so they give us a little bit of something different now i know that a lot a lot of uh, your credit here goes to the offense but i think your defense was the real key to this game well i think it was a total effort i think the offense and the defense both played splendidly i mean we got field position we scored we controlled the ball uh i think both of them deserve an awful lot of credit you've got maryland next week north carolina state after that one uh, excuse north me carolina. north carolina and that one's going to be on tv Coach, again, congratulations on a super win. Well, thank you, Chris. I just can't tell you how happy we are. I really can't. <laughs> General Tom Reed of the North Carolina State Wolfpack, back upstairs to Mike Patrick and Kevin Cuyton. Thank you, Chris. And Tom Reed, a very happy man, and he deserves to be. As Wolfpack goes to 1-1 one and one in the Atlantic Coast Conference, 3-2 and two overall. We'll be back with more from Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia, right after this. Final 27-22, North Carolina State over Georgia Tech. McIntosh, one of the stars of the ball game, as you heard Tom Reed uh, praising him, 138 yards in 27 carries. And it's tough when you come back off an injury, haven't been able to practice much, have not been able to play almost at all, and you carry the ball 27 times against what was the top-ranked defensive group in the ACC and the eighth-ranked defensive team in the entire country and get 138 yards. <laughs> We give McIntosh plenty of credit, and certainly coming off uh, what amounts to injured reserve or whatever for three weeks, he should get credit. But let's give credit to Kozar and Milenicek. That's right. Burnett. Burnett did a nice job. That entire offensive line of NC State really dominated Georgia Tech's defense. And, and I felt, going into the game, looking at these teams, I felt that the defense of Georgia Tech was an excellent defense, and their linebackers were very fine linebackers and probably are. And maybe I underrated that offensive line of uh, NC State a little bit because they handled 
the Georgia Tech yes, defense and dominated and controlled the game. It was the Georgia, it was the uh, the NC State running attack that dominated this game and controlled the tempo of the game. On the other hand, Robert Lovett came in here as the number two uh, running back in the Atlantic Coast Conference, averaging 118 yards a ball game. He got 76 yards today on 25 carries. That's only three yards a carry. You made a couple interesting points during the game about how they were taking Lovett out of the Georgia Tech offense. They took him completely out of the offense and speaking to Tom Reed yesterday, I said, what are you going to do about Robert Lovett? He said, nothing. We're going to play our defense. Our defense is to react to what the offense is doing. They did a nice job of keeping them from throwing the flare pass. And the funny thing about offenses is if you stop them once or twice on their pet plays, they go away from the pet play. And they start doing other things. Uh, Tech tried to pass on first down. It's not their game. Uh, uh, they didn't have success with it. And Levett became uh, a non-factor in the game. All Americans cannot become non-factors in games or else your offense That's doesn't right. work. Quarterback Ken Harrison, uh, Dewberry, 15 out of 24, 225 yards, had a touchdown, but he had three big interceptions. Georgia Tech also had a fumble. The turnovers, big, big factors in this ballgame. Esposito, maybe the best game of his career, 15 out of 19, 143 yards. He was just on the money all day, made great selections about where to throw, when to throw, and what he was doing out there. TV can be tough for Tim. We had Tim two weeks ago. He threw four interceptions. He came back this week, and he had a great game. We have to feel good for him. He was sure. on television. Sure. The final again, North Carolina State 27-22. Back for a final word from Atlanta right after this. Seven twenty-two, North Carolina State over Georgia Tech, and Kevin, I think now the balance in the Atlantic Coast Conference is very evident to everybody. Well, it's certainly evident to you and I. We've seen a lot of these teams. Uh, what can we say about North Carolina, Virginia? Everybody's in it, and Duke has had devastating injuries. They had an excellent team going in. A lot of people make comparisons about conferences. Big Ten's better than Pac-10. Pac-10's better than the ACC. Bowie, that's a lot of baloney. On any day, any team can give any other team a battle, and the ACC has got ACC He's got some fine teams. And we're going to go down to Chris Clackham right now and get an update on some scores, especially, uh, hopefully, that uh, Penn State-Maryland game. Chris? Yeah, we've got that one, Mike. But first of all, let me tell you that North Carolina and Clemson playing at Death Valley. Clemson has jumped out in front a couple of minutes left to go in that game. The Tigers on top right now, 13-6, to a tight contest. Can Clemson lose three games in a row? How long did Ben since they did that? Uh, that now that score that you requested. Penn State is on top of uh, Maryland. Uh, there's uh, just a couple of minutes to go in the game as we understand it. Penn State 25. The Maryland Terps who will play the North Carolina Wolf Pack uh, next uh, next Saturday. They're on top. Penn State 25 and Maryland 18. And Wake Forest and Richmond, the latest from there. The Spiders are still behind the Demon Deacons of Coach Al Grove. The score is 20. 22 to 9. Mike, Kevin? Thank you very much, Chris. 22 9, Wake Forest over Richmond. There's the remainder of the crowd uh, left here at Grand Field in Atlanta. Of course, you're looking at some North Carolina State people who are very, very happy. It's going to be a nice trip back to Raleigh for them. And they come, well, they come. It's nice that they come down here to watch. Sure this is. Game. Let's talk a little bit about the total person concept, Georgia Tech. We touched on it. These guys, uh, you know, they lost a football game today, but they're building more than a football program here. And I think that needs to be said. Georgia Tech uh, prepares people. They've had a lot of pros, and they're continuing to prepare fine football players. But they prepare people, I think, here to do more than that. They give them a lot of counseling. And we can't say enough about Homer Rice and Bill Curry, the type of people you want running your program. And that's indicative in the ACC, Wake Forest, Virginia, NC State. All these schools, I think, prepare their kids to do more than play football. And with the academic standards that Georgia Tech does have, it is sometimes a little bit more difficult to rebuild a program because it's so hard to get people into school and to build up depth, especially on a football team where you're dressing so many guys. Well, if you, you know, Toulouse Lautrec Institute might be able to take everybody in the country. Georgia Tech can't do that, and I think, again, that's indicative of the ACC. you got North Carolina, Virginia. I mean, these are learning institutions and also great football schools now. It's coming. It's coming. And the ACC, I think the balance in the ACC speaks for itself. And if you look at some of the teams that this conference plays and what they do, I think you could probably make your own conclusions about ACC football. Final here again was a big win for North Carolina State. Vice President General Manager for Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions, Bailey Dwiggins. The executive producer for ACC football is John Shreves. Coordinating producer of today's game, Mike Berg. Our producer has been Quasis Star. And the producer of ACC 84, 
Mike Burr. Jim Dussel, our director this afternoon, and Alicia Kivligan, our associate director. We'd also like to take this opportunity to thank from North Carolina State, Athletic Director Willis Casey, Head Coach Tom Reed, Sports Information Director Ed Seaman. From Georgia Tech, Athletic Director Homer Rice, the Head Coach Bill Curry, and Sports Information Director Mike Finn for all the work they did in helping us get ready for this afternoon's game from Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia. Coming up next week at noon, North Carolina at Wake Forest. Kevin and I will be there. You have been watching Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions coverage of ACC football. <laughs>